It's me. Thank you. Yes. And welcome. And it's the show. And it's everyone's favorite show. And it's the Falling in Love show. Falling in love with, with your host, me, Jake, and I'm the host. And today, like every show, we're going to be falling in love. And I'm going to be falling in love with my guest. And perhaps my guest will be falling in love with me. And you, the chat, will be falling in love with me. And you, the chat, will be falling in love with the guest. And the guest may fall in love with you, the chat. And I may fall in love with you, the chat, and we all may fall in love with each other, and that's kind of the show. So, uh, without too much further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, my guests this evening. They are a fellow live streamer, friend of the Everything Now show, an all-around great guy. I'd like to introduce you all to our guest tonight, Cool Guy Gorbis! <laughs> cool Guy Gorbis, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jay. It's a pleasure. Uh, I had your sister on the show not too long ago. Uh, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel like, um, you know, this show has a lot of great history and it has good guests on it, I think, mostly. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You're right about that. I noticed that you have with you some sort of uh, living thing on your lap. And can you tell I us definitely. a little bit more about that? Yeah, these are two living things, actually. You have to be gentle with them because they're small. This is uh, Chunky, the kitten. It's a little hard to see oh, Chunky, Chunky in the camera. Chunky, and then this is Freddy. He's the biggest of the litter. Buddy. This is Freddy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so and my that uh, deserves an applause. <laughs> and how did you come about acquiring those kittens? Those are foster kittens? Yep, so my girlfriend is actually uh, Fostering five kids right And so uh, they're looking for families in the DC network, right? So you know, if anybody's around there and wants to sit, they're so, yeah. Why can't I hear you? I'm, I'm his. Can you hear me okay? Uh, now I can hear you. Chat, can you hear him? Maybe that's just something weird with my receiver here. But now I'm able to hear you better. Anyway, you said that if anybody is looking in the DC metro area, they should... Yeah. So if you okay. live in like the DMV area in DC, these fog ends are available for foster. So if you're interested in uh, taking one home... Uh, or excuse me, I said foster, but it's not an option. Um, so if you're interested in taking one home, let me know. Okay, so well right away, there we go. If I were yeah, in the DC right. area, I'd love to take a kitten home. Ask for more lighting too. <laughs> Guess it's a little quiet. Uh, Gorbis, if you have more lights, we'd love to see them. Otherwise, you're coming in pretty good on my end. It is saying that you're slightly quiet, so I'm gonna see if I can fix that okay. on my end. I have um, I have a headset. Ooh, maybe we can try that. Um, but let me see if, let me see if the issue's on my end. Exactly. It is saying that we're maxed. Uh, we can maybe boost it a little bit. Try talking now. Check, check. I got some foster kitties. <laughs> check, check on foster well, that's kitties. That's a lot better light, actually, yeah. That is looking much better. Okay, Maxi cool. Squid is saying put the headset on. You may have to change your mic settings in Chrome, though, if you do that. So I think let's just keep trying this. Turn the brightness okay. up. That works, too. I think we're... I'm, it's sounding good to me. If we keep having issues, we may make some alterations. But for me, this is great. Cool. Uh, okay, well, we've already plugged the cats. That's great. Uh, yeah. Gorbis, you have seen the show, so you know how it works, but for anybody who does not know, this is an interview show. We have 10 questions. Uh, after the first five questions, we will do a chemistry check, um, and then we'll do the remaining five questions. These questions are designed to help us fall in love. Um, but you, the chat, will decide if that actually happens. So over the course of the episode, there will be three chemistry checks where you get to decide how our chemistry is going. Um, I will be answering the questions as well, so it's not a typical interview show where I am just asking questions and you're just answering. We'll both be answering the questions. I, of course, have an advantage because I wrote all these questions, so I already have answers in mind. Uh, but I have some questions that I wrote and I have not thought about answers to, so perhaps there will be some surprise answers. We're getting an A-plus now from Aiden Wood, uh, which I am assuming means that our quality is back in business. Um, 
Uh, Gorbis, do you have any questions for me or anything you'd like to say before we get started with our first chemistry check? I don't think so. I think I'm ready to get into it. He's ready. Okay, cool. Do it. Well, then, in look. that case, we are going to jump into the very first of three chemistry checks. This is the chemistry check. I'm going to pull up a poll and the chat is going to go ahead and rank our chemistry. So, on a scale of one to five, one being no chemistry, five being perfect chemistry, sight unseen, well I guess technically sight barely seen, uh, go ahead and rank our chemistry. Uh, typically on this first chemistry check we see a lot of threes, maybe a couple twos, a couple fours, but somewhere in the middle. This is just testing the waters. We haven't really talked that much at all yet, so this is basically just first impressions. A lot of things can happen over the course of 10 questions. <laughs> Uh, I'm seeing a couple threes, a couple of twos. I think it's good to start low because that leaves you a lot of room for improvement, which is you know better than the other way. Uh, Legacy Squid is wondering, can we have the option of 69? And unfortunately, no. That would be that would be too long of a poll. Uh, we only can do five. So uh, if you want, you could put five, which is the closest to 69. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have the technology to add. 69 is an option to this chemistry check. We're gonna go ahead and close this out in about eight more seconds. So if you do wanna get in and have your voice heard, please do so now. Otherwise, we are gonna be closing this poll in about five more seconds. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the questions. And three, two, one, and here are our final results. And it looks like three which is pretty typical for our first chemistry check. This is, this is sort of right on the money, par for the course. You'll love to see it. Okay. I'm gonna get back in my throne. And we're back. And that was the first chemistry check. And like I said, there will be two more chemistry checks after that. One after the first five questions, halfway point, and then a final chemistry check at the very end. Uh, where the chat will make the ultimate decision on our chemistry. So, without further ado, Gorbis, we are going to jump into our first question of the evening because the show has a habit of running extremely long and I'm trying to avoid that, although whatever happens, happens. So we're going to jump into this first question here, and that is, of course, what do you do to help fall asleep? Well, Gorbis, what do you do to help lately, fall asleep? Lately, it's been melatonin all the way. I mean... Drugs. I have been uh, caf drugs, straight up drugs. I've been caffeinating late. I have been sleeping in, so to fall asleep, it's really just been melatonin and uh, staying up as late as possible. So, are you the type of person who sleeps in dead quiet, or do you like to have sound in your room? I do not like to have sound in my room. I'm more of like a, a dead quiet kind of person, but I'm definitely an easy sleeper and I am a hard sleeper, so sound in general. Interesting. Do you have trouble? Quick. Do you have trouble falling asleep when you're like at a sleepover? <laughs> have you had a sleepover? Uh, last time you had a sleepover? I, I don't know. A strange question. I was. I'm just thinking about that. I just spent the weekend at a house with some friends at an Airbnb, and that kind of felt like the closest I've had to a sleepover in a while. But yeah, you're actually, sort of strange sleeping with people who aren't your family in the same room as then. Yeah. Yeah. I think I usually help you. Well, fall asleep people, uh, sleepovers or not. Um, I have like this game night that I've done with my friends since we were in high school, where we just kind of hang out every few months or when we're back in town um, and just play you know, our games until, until we all pass out. And usually I'm the first one to sleep because I just can't stay up very late, um, especially when we're doing like the 30th round of Mario Party and it's, <laughs> it's like <laughs> and we had some drinks. It's, it's, it's easy to fall asleep. So um, yeah, yeah, I've never really had an issue with that really. Interesting. Margaret Party, sort of like a tranquilizer. And we're getting some comments from <laughs> our chat that are saying uh, that there's some audio distortion when you talk for a while. So maybe, I don't know, is the headset easily accessible? Yeah, okay, super let's, accessible. Let's, let's like... try that. And it wouldn't be falling in love with without some audio issues. 
And somebody whose name I'm having a hard time reading because of the color is saying, Everything Now Show, you can come to my house for a sleepover anytime. And I appreciate that name who I can't quite make out. Is it Kevin? But thank you, person. I haven't had a sleepover in a while. I do enjoy... And it is Kevin. And that's really great. Stream Elements is still having issues. Uh, yeah, Stream Elements, kind of janky. It does like to shout out people a lot. But follow two puppets. I don't know why we're shouting them out right now, but they're great. Go follow two puppets. I think they're streaming right now. But don't go right now, because this is my show right now. And if you're just joining us, I'm your host, Jake. This is Falling In Love With. Right now, our guest, Cool Guy Gorbis, is grabbing a headset so that you are able to hear the sultry, dulcet tones of his voice. LMAO, stay here, we're not live. And Two Puppets is not live. So definitely do not go to their channel right now. There will be nothing for you. Instead, stay here and watch Falling In Love With with me, your host, Jake. And any moment now, my guests will be returning with cool, crisp audio in the form of a headset. And if you missed it, we were just talking about how we fall asleep. And Cool Guy Gorbis was saying that he typically likes to fall asleep in silence, which is not how I like to fall asleep. I like to have I like to have sound, but I'm going to I'm going to talk to him a little bit more about that when we get this headset situation figured out. Talked a little bit about sleepovers. Chat, when was the last time you had a sleepover? Falling in love with Jake. Yes. Falling in love with me, falling in love with Gorbis, falling in love with each other in the chat. I would love if some people in the chat met through this show and got married and had a kid and made me the <laughs> godfather. And that would be really pretty romantic. Silence and with drugs, says Aiden Wood. And yes, that was sort of the, oh, look at this. And now we're on gamer mode. <laughs> Let me see if I can get the audio to actually work, though. Okay. And Kevin says, Jake, I'm the same. I almost need sound to sleep. I think that there's something to do with the brain and white noise for some people. And for me, it's not even white noise. I need like, like a podcast or just some sort of like academic lecture, something that is boring enough that it doesn't completely draw my attention and keep me awake, but something that is interesting enough for, uh, to sort of distract me from the dark thoughts that I have uh, that keep me awake at night. Just really rides that line of boring and interesting. Audio is a lot better so far, says Aiden. I'm not sure we've even switched the mics yet, so if you think this is good, <laughs> just you wait. Can we have no sound okay. or light? Uh, I can have no Check. sound or light when I'm sleeping like a sea squid. Interesting. And that's sounding more like... Can you hear me now? I can hear you perfectly clear. I don't know how the chat okay, great. is feeling about it, but for me, this is working really well. Cool. Yeah, so that means at least the, the audio is set up and everything, so... Excellent. And chat, let us know if it's sounding good for you. Uh, but we were talking about falling asleep. You said yes. that currently you are on a regimen of melatonin and silence. <laughs> Uh, how about darkness level? Are you a nightlight person? Do you need complete darkness? I do enjoy a nice nightlight. Um, I I had a very special one to me that I had for like about 15 years of my life. That was like a literal night, like a little medieval night nightlight. Um, so I, I have an appreciation. I usually don't sleep with the nightlight nowadays, but if anybody were to gift me a nightlight, it would be it would be great. Whoa. George on the web is rating with party of ten. Another George. Welcome. Hey George. George on the web. <laughs> and we've got a George here, and actually their name is Cool Guy Gorbis. Uh, yes. And this is falling in love with, and welcome to the show. And I guess we're also still supporting Armenia because we keep forgetting to take this donation bar down. But they can still <laughs> use our support, so we're gonna still we're gonna keep we're gonna keep raising money for Armenia. So all donations to the show uh, tonight will go to support Armenia. Let's see if we can hit that $200 goal, I guess, that we've got at the top right now. That's uh, that's good. 
Um, but if you're just joining us, this is Falling in Love with, with Cool Guy Gorbis. He's the guest, and right now we're talking about how we fall asleep. Uh, and Gorbis is a nightlife person, which is interesting to me. Uh, you don't have a, a nightlight right now, though. So if anybody in the chat wants no. to send one to Cool Guy Gorbis, um, do you want to just say your home address right now on the internet? Not at all. Uh, okay. No, I do not. No. Nope. Okay. It's in well, Michigan, we'll though. Do that. All right. Well, send a nightlight to Michigan. Gorbis is gonna find that. <laughs> uh, just kind of toss it <laughs> over the border between Indiana and Michigan. He'll he'll figure that out. Um, we're Stick gonna get uh, a nightlight over to you. I uh, do not like to have light in my room, preferably. I tend to have it anyway, just because I have I have a like alarm clock radio type thing that is kind of bright that is in my room that emits like a blue light. I also have an air conditioning unit that even when it's off, it sort of just has like an idle light that is on. So there right. are kind of just like ambient lights in my room, but if I could have it my way, there'd be no light in my room, but I do like, I do like sound. I like to have, usually I'll have my laptop next to my bed with the screen turned off playing some sort of YouTube video that is, like I said, boring enough that it doesn't keep my attention and keep me awake. Right. But interesting enough that it can keep my attention away from, you know, just like spiraling into stress <laughs> and worries and things like that. Yeah, do you not have want to be. Do you not? Can you just like shut your brain up? What do you think about when you're falling asleep? Do you have like a mantra or something that you're, so, that you say? No, I just kind of let my thoughts wander. And then actually sometimes as that's happening, I just kind of notice my thoughts getting stupider and stupider and stupider, like almost like I'm entering like a dream. And then um, at some point, I just it just switches off like a light, and then I don't remember anything after that. But there's actually our times where I'm falling asleep. I usually just try to like like relax my muscles in my brain, I guess, just like edit, not like intentionally, <laughs> but like just I mean I just feel like I just kind of veg out and just try to like lull myself into um, uh, 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 unconsciousness as it is. But I, I used to like do this thing also. Um, now that I think about it when I was little, where like if you close your eyes and you kind of just imagine that you're getting, you're, like you're falling into a dark hole and that and you try to imagine like circles kind of pulsating past you as you're falling, that that got me like seemingly into a deeper and deeper sleep as I went and I it, that helps me fall asleep a lot. So that's one trick that's kind of like counting sheep that I would say. Whoa, that is trippy. So that is like an active, yeah. do you find it counter, it, to me it seems almost counterintuitive to be actively thinking about something, but like that's why I could never do falling or counting sheep because if I'm focusing on right. counting sheep, then I'm spending mental energy to count the sheep. But this is, what you're right. describing sounds like more like almost like a self-induced hypnosis. Yeah, I mean it's definitely not something I focus on like counting sheep, it's just like and I, when I first started doing it, it was because I noticed, like, I just noticed, you know, like, when you have, like, colors and stuff in your eyes when you close your eyes, yeah. I just kind of noticed that doing that pattern, I kind of, like, saw it before I thought to do it. Um, and then I kind of realized it, it was kind of, I don't know, the fact that it was it was falling into a dark hole specifically kind of made the sleepy part of it kind of just seem natural, too. So it wasn't like I'm imagining a bright, like, LED screen with, like, sheep jumping over a fence, you know? It was more just kind of hypnotic, kind of, in a way, like you were saying. Gotcha. So, well, I'd recommend it. I'm going to try that. And speaking of hypnosis, actually, I don't know if these, these ideas are related, but Aiden would like me to ask you about lucid dreaming. And I'm not sure what in what aspect of lucid... Are, are you a lucid dreamer? Have you practiced lucid dreaming? No. I'm not a lucid dreamer, and I've tried really hard to be one. Um, like, And I, I've given up th this up, but um, in high school... I read up a lot. It was actually when I first forayed into subreddit like years and years ago. Maybe it's been like a decade of Reddit at this point. But um, but I remember going onto the Lucid Dreaming subreddit and just reading tips on how to induce it. Um, and there's like a lot of different tips that there were. One of them is um, trying to count your fingers and your hands. And if you have an, an odd number of appendages, then you know that this isn't real life and you're sleeping. Unless you are disabled in that way, which would this would be, you know, you just count a different number of fingers, I guess. Sure. But um. But, uh, or like, I guess, and also like you can't, it's hard to read a clock or when you look at a clock twice, it'll say a different time. Um, so that's common in dreams, um, and things like that. So, uh, and another tip, for example, is, um, it recommended that after four hours of being asleep, waking yourself up with an alarm and then writing everything in your, that you've been thinking about in your dreams down, because after it, that's when you're first, it might be off in the science, it's been a while, but I think that's the first after you first finish the first REM cycle and you're about to start the second one, you have like the best dream recall. 
And the idea is if, if you write down your dreams and you remember your dreams, you can recognize patterns and you can recognize when you are in a dream that way a little better. Um, which I always thought was really interesting, so I tried to do it and I could never do it. Not one time. <laughs> You couldn't, um, and do sometimes you couldn't I've had, wake up at the right time or you couldn't journal or which part were you struggling with? Oh, no, lucid dream, lucid dream. Oh, so, I see. So um, did you try the journaling thing though? Yeah, I tried for a while. And honestly, it was, it was a rewarding thing to do anyway because I, I enjoyed reading the dreams and a lot of them were kind of illuminating to what was happening in my subconscious. Like, you know, like long time issues with family or things like that. Like, just like would come up to the forefront in those dreams a lot of the time and I didn't even realize I was having them. So that was, it was, it was an interesting like, psychoanalysis of myself too although i didn't read too much into it i was just like i'm just writing it down so do you did you keep them do you still have those uh i don't think so do you write them longhand or do you like type them out i I wrote them longhand because it was just next to my my bed you know bedside table or whatever Mm -hmm. um and i think that typing it out when you look at a screen like it makes you not able to fall asleep as easily so i definitely would recommend it writing writing a longhand too but um but I mean, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like a, a whole story of what happened. It was just like bullet points, like, which is probably made it really funny to read to anybody afterwards if you didn't remember the dream. Because it just probably seemed like crazy shit, like, like, saw grandma naked, ran away, <laughs> hid in the bush, grandpa found me, like, <laughs> like I don't know. But Somebody could go along That wasn't the dream, by the way. Uh, yeah, here's that. an interesting <laughs> question from the chat. Um, what are your thoughts on the Pentagon announcing that they had alien spacecraft that wasn't made on our Earth? Colonel in the military, which is the third highest rank, came out and said that apparently we got microprocessors from them, which are the basis of all computers. And not really on topic, but wait for real question. This is what I'm reading. Is that real? Chat. I don't know. This is this is a person who just <laughs> entered the chat and followed and then asked that question. Um, it is an interesting question. My thoughts immediately are, who is this guy? Why are you <laughs> asking this? Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Um, but cool. That does sound cool. What about you, Gorbis? What are your immediate reactions to that? I think this is an obvious truth to have reached. Um, there's no way we could have done all this by ourselves. The pyramids. I no, I'm just kidding. I, I don't really <laughs> believe it but I would like to believe it. So if you can provide that evidence, I will read whatever you put in front of me. Um, and then I'll have to like judge the source, but like I will read it if you send it to me. <laughs> yes, please send more information. Our Discord link is down below. Uh, we don't have a alien conspiracy theory section, but go ahead and post it in politics because I feel like that is where it belongs. <laughs> Um, and I'd love to read more about that. Unfortunately, we cannot spend too much time talking about aliens of the Pentagon because we do have True. nine more questions to cover. I feel like we covered uh, this sleep question pretty well. Uh, I'm glad that we got into yeah. dreams a little bit. Uh, but I think it's time to move on to question number two, which is, of course, if you were reincarnated, <laughs> who or what would you be reincarnated as? And I think this question can be interpreted two ways and we could potentially answer it both ways. Um, the first would be, what would you like to be reincarnated if you had the choice of being reincarnated as something? And then I think perhaps a more interesting way to take it would be sort of like the, is it, is it the Buddhist tradition that has sort of like a karmic uh, version of, of reincarnation where like you kind of are reincarnated as like sort of what you deserve to be like you you learn yeah the lesson. Uh, I'm not I'm pretty sure familiar. that's Buddhist yeah it could be um, Hindu as well but I can't really mm -hmm. remember I know uh, the Hindu has like um a similar like um like concepts I, I can't describe it <laughs> I'm not sure either but it is some sort yeah. of Eastern Eastern spirituality that that has reincarnation I think it's a really cool idea so let's start with the first one. Is there is there a specific type of person or type of animal or type of object that you would like to be reincarnated if given the option? I have like kind of the answer. There's kind of two ways you could go with this answer. One is, um, you know, what would be the most fun to be reincarnated as? What do I want to experience as? Mm -hmm. But honestly, the whole point of reincarnation is that you kind of move past material worldly experiences. So I would just hope that I would be moved on to a, a, t a being that would allow me to be more wise in that specific particular way. Mm. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm going to go on that route because it seems more entertaining and not as like pets, which would probably be the answer. Um, but on the other way, but 
I don't know. I think I, I guess if I'm really gonna get into this question, I guess humans are the species of like creation and and I guess intellectualism. Although maybe it's oh, I would be a I would be um, one of those gigantic mushrooms. A gigantic mushroom. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So the largest organism in the world is actually a, a mushroom, and it's underneath an entire forest, um, and it has it has communication with itself like across the entire network of mushrooms. So that's why it's considered one organism, um, which I, I think would be cool. Cause I, yeah, and this might be pseudoscience. So I de definitely double check me, but <laughs> cause I don't remember where I read this, but I believe um, it. yeah, I, and I'm going to choose to believe it, but I, I feel like mushrooms are kind of a different form of life that have a different kind of intelligence, kind of like and be in, in, in the animal kingdom in an analogy would be maybe like the jellyfish or something. Um, although I don't really know how that works either, but um, I don't know. I think I think a, a gigantic mushroom because I just want to see how that is and how it is to be like that. That's a really cool answer. I'm not <laughs> expecting that. I really like that idea. I'm really curious about this giant mushroom now. And like, I, well, I think I've heard like a, there's like this type of tree that is similarly like it looks like yeah. a bunch of trees, but they're all sort of like connected at the root, so it's like technically one really big tree or something like that. Similar kind of idea. Yeah. And yeah, I think there is something to be said for this idea of having like a sensory system that expands so far like that, where you can be yeah. feeling, feeling things, uh, you know, like the size of a football field. Like what, what would that even feel like? It's like yeah. almost hard to comprehend. Yeah. Uh, and if, if my, I want to say a few more things about this, because now that my memory is going about it, but like, I think. I don't even know what I'm saying is true, so take all of this with a grain of salt. But but I think that it has the ability to move nutrients from one part of the system to the other, depending on need. Or maybe maybe I've heard tr maybe I've heard it's that like certain forests have that ability. One of the one or the other of those things are true. But um but yeah, I think I think plants are really interesting life forms generally. Do you feel like plants um, communicate or have feelings? And I also, think not feelings in the way is, is a mushroom a plant or is it a different category? For some reason, I feel like fungus is a different category or like a different species than plant. But or a, I know species. I think is you're not right. The right word. I don't really know what the difference is, but I feel like there's they, Jones is saying they're different. And if you have more information on that, yeah. I'd love to know. Um, but I think it's like a different genus or something. Hmm. Maybe that's the word. I don't know. But do you feel like trees, for example, like? If you chop one down, do you think it it feels that in any in, in any meaningful way? I think that it perceives it, or like I think that it it reacts to it. Mm. So I think that there's I, maybe and maybe not in all cases, but I know there are cases where trees react to the changing of other trees, and I think that there are like can like that happens more often when they're like genetically related i would i don't know if i'm not super confident in that claim but like i i do believe that they can sense each other in some way um and i don't really know enough about it to say how that is but that is something i believe that i don't really know if i can back up <laughs> but, i kind of get that sense too i kind of feel i can i kind of feel that I, and we're getting also some confirmation now from the chat that mushrooms are not plants uh they are their own kingdom and uh, they're actually more closely related to animals than they are to plants, according to Aiden. And that's pretty wow. interesting. I don't really know that's what really that cool. means. Um, but maybe like, <laughs> they don't have, do they have cell walls? I remember in grade school learning that the main difference between plants and animals was a cell wall. And that plants have a cell uh, wall. And that uh, animals just have a uh, like membrane or something like that. Anyway, yeah. I would be an octopus. Um, <laughs> I think octopus are really cool. I've heard they're super smart. Uh, you are a cell wall, <coughs> says Jones. Thank you. Um, I think octopus are really interesting. Octopi. Um, they have been established as like some of the more intelligent creatures in the world, besides humans, obviously. And then I, what I really like what they do with like camouflage and stuff i think that's super interesting yeah. to be able to do that i think and also to know what that feels like if there's some sort of physical feeling associated with camouflage um i don't oh, know yeah. if there is. what do you think that would feel like 
I don't know, because they, their camouflage, it's not like where humans just like, you know, we get like red when we blush or whatever, which you don't really feel. Right. I guess maybe you can sort of like feel some warmth in your face. But when uh, some of these octopus or octopi camouflage, they like change the texture of their body as well. It's not just like a color thing. Like, I don't know if you've seen these videos on right. YouTube where they'll like swim up to a piece of coral and then it'll be all smooth. And then all of a sudden it will be like all jaggly and stuff. I haven't seen the texture part of it. That's amazing. I've seen like crazy camouflage like that, but I didn't realize the texture was also part of it. I thought it was just like, wow. I think, I think they can also change the texture. It may just be a visual thing that looks like they're changing texture and actually they're still just smooth, but they look bumpy. I don't know for sure, but I feel like I've seen a video where hmm. they can do that. Yeah, um, I've seen very convincing camouflage, so I would believe it. Yeah, have you seen uh, Cuttlefish? Do you know about Cuttlefish? No, I mean, I know, I know of cuttlefish, but I, don't, I know nothing about them. They are sort of similar to uh, octopus or octopi in that they can do like really mesmerizing color illusion stuff, like even more so than, uh, oh, cool. than octopus. They're really dope. Uh, so that would be, that might be cool to be one too. We've got Legacy Squid saying that I would be the immortal jellyfish. That way I will live forever and I become a magical jellyfish god that takes over the world. Yes, there's a lot of steps there, um, but I believe in you. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard uh, the idea that, um, I think it's lobsters um, and maybe crocodiles? Oh, look at those little guys. Aww. I'll try to stay um, in the chat. But... Have you heard that lobsters and crocodiles are both immortal animals, like in that they can't die from old age? Like, they obviously you can kill them. Um, they can't they can be killed. But, like, they have sort of... <laughs> genetic makeup where where they just like don't age and if like if given the proper um you know treatment they can like theoretically live forever like wow. their, their cells don't die i don't know if that's true we've done a lot of that's... speculating about biology in this question which i think is fun yeah yeah i think i think we're qualified um yeah we should continue to do that <laughs> really. i agree um and someone in the chat is asking kitten kittens and yes those are kittens if you live in the DC yes. metro area, um, please let us know because they could be yours. And what are their names again? It's gonna be kind of hard to remember all of them. This is Carrie. This is Meyer. This is Freddy. And oh, oh here's Chunky. <laughs> I forgot there's a fourth one. And then Ripley is on. He's he's a sleeper there. So yeah, the, Chunky. I got dibs. Um, he's my favorite. And also, people don't like to adopt black cats as often, so I want to make sure he's got a home. Um, but then, yeah, the other ones are definitely... I mean, I mean, look at them. I mean... Look at those cats. How could you not? How could you not move to the DC metro area right now? <laughs> those cats. Adorable. Well... Anyway. Uh, I think I think we've answered that question pretty well. Um, you would like to be reincarnated as a giant mushroom, uh, and for me, it's going to be the noble octopus. Uh, and I wish us the best of luck in, in both of those uh, pursuits. I think uh, with that, I feel comfortable moving on to the third question. Do you feel good about that? Yeah, definitely. All right, we're gonna do it. And this is question three, and it is, if heaven exists, what does it look like? And I guess first my question, the, the sort of preliminary question here is, do you believe that there is a heaven or any sort of afterlife? Yeah, I mean, I don't really know. Um, I don't really think so, at least not in the sense that it's described. Um, I think that if there is a heaven, then it's, it's be probably beyond the scope of words, and whenever someone's ever written about it, it's probably wrong. Um, and, I, and I don't think that we probably could perceive what it would be like in our kind of mortal way. Mm. So I think that if if God exists or some other um, like afterlife exists or something beyond the, our current lives, then I think um, there's really no, I don't know, I don't really see much point thinking about it because I think it'll be beyond the scope of what we can think about anyway. So I kind of um, don't usually think too much about it, but um, I'd probably have a lot of clouds and gates and things. That makes yeah, sense. Harp, so little babies. Har oh yeah, yeah. Because everybody knows that that's, that's what everybody wants in life, 
and afterlife is just harps and babies. Um, the cloud thing, I think, makes sense to me because it's like in the sky, and the sky sort of represents like you know this unattainable place that can you know only be reached. So that that part of the imagery, you know, there, there are yeah. these like classic tropes that like we you already touched on some of them. The cherubs, I think, are sort of weird. The like chubby flying babies. I don't fully understand why. It, you know, you'd think it would be old people because old people typically <laughs> are the ones that die. So the angels would probably be old. But maybe like when the, these concepts or these tropes are being created, like babies are dying a lot more than they are now. I also wonder if the fact that you live forever makes you a baby forever. Mm. Do you feel you know? like because if you if, no, go ahead. Well, I mean, if you have everlasting life and you never get older and die, then maybe you, when you start in heaven, you're just, you start at day one as a baby and then you're just always a baby in heaven. Like, that could be it. I feel like <laughs> day one, the day one babies look different than the babies that are in like your tradition, like the babies that you see traditionally in like, you know, iconic heaven imagery are like, I would say closer to like, eight month, nine month, year and a half. They look like baby. Have you ever seen like a day one baby? They don't even look like babies. They look like- Yeah, they look like-, like, like <laughs> You're right. Kind of like a dog, kind of looks like a, like a mole rat or something. Like it doesn't really look like the thing yeah. it's gonna be until like a little while, a little ways in. Yeah, oh my God, imagine if a bunch of flying day one babies were floating around heaven. Oh my God. Yeah. That would be horrible. <laughs> That'd be fucked up for sure. That'd be really scary. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to hold the um, the harps probably really well. Yeah. No. Uh, so if it, let's say that there is a heaven and it is um, sort of you are able to perceive it in in some sort mm -hmm. of like you know it's not just sort of like this ethereal energy that can't be perceived by any you know of the five senses. What if you could create your own? you know, quote unquote heaven, like an ideal situation where you, and you can make the rules. What does that look like for you? Like you get there, you show up, what are you seeing? Are we in a lobby? Are we, are we in the traditional pearly gates or where, what are we looking at? I think that we're in a place with a lot of open space and like, and vision. Like I want to be able to see a really long way. Um, but I also, I, I also would imagine like, like extreme comfort and, and kind of like style and and taste of the place like i would expect like maybe i had like a, a fantastic mansion on the top of the hill on, of like a mountainside on a cliff and i had all the things i could ever want in that place and then looking out i could see just like beautiful natural spaces and, and animals flourishing and and i don't know maybe if i wanted to see people someday i would see people but i don't know i, I feel like it's also part of it is that it's at your whim of what you decide too so yeah, I think uh, that's that what I would, is that's an what interesting I would. aspect of it. I think, I, I often think about like, you know, if you were to go to heaven, obviously like you would want to see your friends and family, you know, the people that you love, you know, that would be presumably part of most people's right. ideal situation. But then it's like, are they copies? Of, you know, if those people are still alive, like, like your kids, let's say, you know, God willing you die uh, before your kids do. Um, when you get to this heaven place, do you get a copy of those people? Do you, is it like the thing where you are looking down, but you can't actually like talk to them? What do you think? I think you can definitely I talk to them as much as you would want to. Like, are you like, are I don't you know. Imagining like, are you, see, I feel like the two sort of scenarios mm -hmm. that, that I think of are either you get the copy, so like there is a version of them living their life on Earth, but then you get sort of like an exact clone replica that kind of can just exist timelessly in your like dream box, you know, God space up above. Or uh, it's like the ghost thing where like you can go down to Earth and like visit them and you're invisible and like maybe, you know, like you can like whisper a little things when they're asleep yeah. and they're like oh my god i was visited by my dad or whatever um like you like kind of rustle the curtains or you can like flicker a, a candle or something like that yeah yeah um, i mean at this at this point the question i feel like it kind of goes back to what i was saying earlier which is like i feel like you could have experiences and interactions that are kind of beyond the scope of our understanding now um but i mean i yeah i, I would i i think that like if, if i were to like accept kind of just like 
the fact that it existed and it had a certain set of like rules to it, like it would be, <laughs> I know I feel like you'd have to have an exact replica of in heaven is because right? you can't take somebody out of the existing world who's not sure. already in heaven. Like, point taken there. So yeah, I think it it would have to at least feel like an exact replica, probably. Do you feel like but, you would get bored eventually? Like I also think like you know part of this sort of implicit idea of heaven is that like you can have whatever you want. It's perfect there. So you can, you know, manifest your favorite foods or, you know, your favorite whatever TV show. I don't know why you'd be watching TV in heaven, but, uh, like, <laughs> Fox News only, whatever, maybe. <laughs> whatever, you know, um, carnal desires or, um, or, you know, like, uh, superficial wants that you had, you could sort of immediately uh, manifest. Do you feel like that would get boring would you do you find do you think you would eventually like start becoming like some weird pervert fetish guy who just like seeking <laughs> seeking like crazy things because you just have done everything for eternity how do you what are, you, what are your thoughts on that I, I absolutely would become some crazy pervert guy trying to you know to experience everything one time at least i, I think that i would i don't know i mean there's so many things to do already in the world. I don't. I don't really get bored in my daily life. Really, I mean, I do when I'm just like doom scrolling through Twitter. But like, um, but I don't know. I feel, I feel like life is generally pretty entertaining as is. So if I had so many things to my disposal in heaven, I don't know if I'd ever get bored. Really. Um, Something that I've thought about is like, what if you could self-impose like a rule set? You know, like obviously in in right. in, in the real world, you you know there are the, the laws of physics and and like the laws of your country and like things like that that are sort of imposed upon you by outside forces that you know that's why you can't just manifest whatever you want and maybe i feel like for the first whatever millennia i would just no rules full cheat codes on just do whatever i want yeah. you know fly mode super jump you know big yeah. head mode everything is on do whatever yeah I you want. gotta flip that big head mode on yeah. yeah activate big head mode go fully crazy do do all the weird <laughs> pervert stuff and then after like the first millennia or two, I would kind of like hit the reset button and then play like, like a, like almost like a video game where like you play it through like, what is life on easy mode? And you're just like, you just like go through a simulation of life as like, you know, a prince or like some billionaire mogul's child. And then you like run it through again is like, you know, a little bit harder. Like now you're just kind of like a middle class blue collar guy. And then you like run it back and you just kind of like keep leveling it up. So there's some sort of like structure. Does that resonate with you at all? Yeah, yeah, it definitely resonates with me. And, and it kind of begs the question, um, if you are living in that scenario now, um, what, what mode are you on? Whoa, I feel like I am on one of the easier difficulties for sure. <laughs> I feel that too. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel like yeah, I could I could definitely I I definitely have a few more run throughs before I'm on before I'm on a challenging set. And it's already pretty hard. So um, <laughs> yeah. So I don't I don't want to do a harder mode right now. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting idea. You know, because there are those theories that like um, when you die you come back, you know, this goes back to the reincarnation idea where it's like angels are just like recycling their life over and over again like coming back to earth but like you know you have to learn some sort of lesson do you feel that at all or do you feel like this is the true reality i i prefer that version of reality to like kind of the standard christian one and i guess like the three standard judeo-christian uh religions but i it's um, I mean, I I don't even know what to believe religiously because I also kind of believe in like the whole simulation theory thing, and I've been like back and forth about that. So honestly, at this point, I have no idea what to even think is reality or not. But um, gun to your head, especially in twenty twenty. What's you know? going on? There's a guy he comes up. He says, "What the fuck is happening, cool guy Gorbis? Tell me right now. What do you believe? Or I'll blow your what do I believe? Brain uh, what do you say? I believe. I believe. I believe that." We probably randomly came about in an order of atoms from a propulsion of like a, a lot of matter and energy, and we've arranged to become what we are on this world where, for some reason, gravity and physics exist. And now I'm here, and uh, you know, that's, that's as far as I could get. 
when he blows your head off. You kind of he broke says, me a little bit. Find out, man. <laughs> we're gonna fucking find out. Uh, yeah, me too. That's pretty much what I would say. <laughs> that's what I would say. Yeah, too. I mean, um, I don't really know, but yeah, I have no idea. I think you're probably right. Uh, you know, Occam's Razor is like what you just said. Like it's just some boring shit right. where it's just kind of all random and it's all meaningless. And but it would be cool. Yeah. It would be really tight if uh, if there were some sort of master plan here that we became... I feel like even if there was some sort of master plan where it was like there's some sort of intelligent being that is pulling the strings, um, we would not even be able to comprehend it anyway. So it's like, right. you know, it doesn't even really right. matter. It's like, you know, either yeah. way, your perception is just, you know, what you are able to perceive. Yeah, totally. Hell yeah. All right, we're going to move on. <laughs> Damn, we got into it, but that, I mean, it sounds yeah, like we're, I mean, one. the chem check, I mean, we're kind of on the same page, so I'm, I'm feeling I'm surprised good about this upcoming good. chem check. That was what, question <laughs> three, I want to say, maybe four? Yeah. Let's see what question four is. Uh, oh, this one's uh, pertaining to live mm. streaming, because I know that you are an up-and-coming live streamer, and so this is something <laughs> that I want to uh, pick your brain about. What is something that you have learned from live streaming, from one live streamer to another? Um... I think that, I mean, there's things I've, I've learned about my process that I want to improve already, and I think the main thing is that I need to be more organized and, like, need to kind of plan things out more in, in general in my life, but also, I mean, because it kind of has come to bear on the streaming thing, because, I mean, I, I do have a schedule, but in terms of, like, planning what I'm going to stream at a certain day um, and a certain time and, and not just kind of, like, being my personality on camera, I mean, while that is a kind of a plan in itself, I, I think it would be better to be more organized and... Uh, and I, I'm excited that like I have learned that because now I, I have an opportunity to improve there. So um, that's probably what I would say. Mm. Do you feel like there's a big difference between your on-camera personality and your off-camera personality? And if so, what is it? I would say not particularly, except for I feel like I need to be more energetic when I'm on camera and trying to entertain. Um, and I, I would expect that to be you know pretty typical. But like I just feel like you know I want people to s stick around and, and to. And to be entertained and to have fun, so I just like I gotta bring that fun a bit. But um, and also I think that um, in re real life I am much. I mean I have ADHD, so that's one thing about me. But so it's really hard for me to focus on one thing. So really like dialing into chat and making sure I'm focused on the community building and what people are saying and making sure I can do that and also like have another activity going is like difficult for me to do naturally. So um, you know. I, th I think you would, you would see me kind of trying to more actively remind myself to do a lot of things at once, which is probably not typical for what you would see me in a normal day, which is more just kind of vibing, you know? <laughs> I feel that, yeah. I, I'm also a viber, and I, I similarly share that feeling of, of being easily distracted, and uh, I mean, even right now, just like watching the chat sort of like scroll up the screen and like having to split focus between listening to you and like trying to sort of pay attention to what's going on over there is really difficult. Yeah. That is sort of a real issue with this format that I have not quite cracked. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, what you're saying, I, I, I relate to, I think. Um, obviously, my stream is slightly different in that, like, a lot of the times I'm playing characters. So I think there is a just sort of inherent level of separation. And that's part of the reason that I wanted to do this show, which is... I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm still playing a character in a way in that I'm wearing this suit that I would never wear in real right. life. And... Uh, there's an artifice of, of the structure, but I'm me, Jake, as opposed to some sort of wacky improv character that you would normally see on Everything Now show. Um, but I do, I think, like having a character in some way. Like, I feel like there is a level of vulnerability that it, just being yourself because I, I, I've thought about this, I, I don't know, I'll pose it to you as a question, I guess. Well, first I'll just say my perspective and then I'll say, I'll see what you think about it. But I, I think that there's something sort of unnerving about the idea, specifically with streamers and influencers generally, that you sort of commodify your, per when you commodify your genuine personality or like when you commodify like your, um, uh, like, vulnerability, um, and honesty as a person, like suddenly your career and your livelihood and your sort of like external value becomes intrinsically linked to who you are. And so 
you know, your value sort of is now tied to how successful, you know, your, your own perceived success on this platform. Whereas somebody who's like an actor or a musician or something, they have their art or whatever they're creating is sort of the thing that their success is tied to. But at least there's sort of a sense of removal. Whereas like with streamers, um, there's like almost a one-to-one, -one. like you are the, the product, the person is the product as opposed to some sort of creative thing being the product. Um, does that worry you as a streamer? Do you do you see that with other streamers? Do you think that that is something worth worrying about? I think it's it's worth being conscious of because I and I think that really means that as a streamer you have to kind of feel confident in yourself before you put yourself in front of a camera because um, otherwise you're gonna fall into that trap really easily. Um, uh, I my mom's actually a, a, a emotional wellness counselor. And she talks to me a lot about like living in accordance with your values and not being, um, not shaming yourself or being too hard on yourself, I guess, when you act out, out of alignment with those values, but really like kind of trying to reflect on what those are consistently so that you can kind of sense when you're out of line um, with, with yourself, I guess. So I would say, I would say for me, I feel like it's, it's something that I'm, I'm, not really worried about happening because it happens to everyone in some capacity and it's really just about and I feel like I've developed over the years because from my from my mom like kind of a, a third eye in a way kind of try, like a third person perspective looking at myself doing that kind of thing so I, I think I feel pretty prepared for the fact that that's going to be more common and inevitable as a streamer but I but I feel pretty confident the fact that I've, I've had some pretty good kind of emotional training to to deal with that um, but it's absolutely something that is going to happen to anybody who streams and i think that that it's it's not something that's worth resisting as much because it's, it's going to happen um and the best thing you can do is just kind of um you know not focus on the things that made you want to stream as opposed to the numbers mm -hmm. um and if, if if the reason why you started streaming was to gain a following or to to watch that number grow um i would probably reevaluate why you're doing that um why did but, you start yeah, streaming? Was, Do you, have you taken stock and like like thought about that at all? A little bit. Um, for me, I was playing a lot of video games, and I felt like I was I was very good at the game. So I've always been um, really good at first person shooters. And when Fortnite came out, I was really good at third person shooters as well. Um, and I just kept for me, I just kept thinking, wow, like this is really crazy what's happening. Like I'm impressed with myself, and I feel like people would probably want to see what I'm doing. So it was kind of like a gameplay focus, but and then. But aside from that, really, like I've I've been in theater growing up, so I, I kind of knew I would at least be able to do kind of the performative part as well, um, and the public speaking aspect of it. So I thought, hey, I mean, like, it looks like I have the skills to do this, so maybe I should just give it a shot and kind of make something with all the time I'm sinking into other video games and things, and make it kind of a constructive experience. Um, so for me, like every time, like I I like I post a video of a good gameplay, or I, I turn on a live stream and have a have an audience to talk to. I, I just think it's really um, it's a skill building thing and also just trying to make something with my time in the world too. So, um, so yeah. Do you worry at all about, and this is something that I think is specific to gaming streaming. So I don't have a ton of experience with it, but it is something that I think about. And especially with some of the, I've heard some other gaming streamers talk about it, like a dependence on the, like the idea that, you know, like if you become famous for streaming Fortnite, for example, or like you, you start to build a following playing Fortnite, like eventually, well, Fortnite's probably a bad example because Fortnite seems to never want to die and like we'll just keep <laughs> continue releasing seasons. But like theoretically, most games have some sort of lifespan and eventually they go away. Um, and then there is this idea of like, how do you maintain a audience or a community of people who want to who are there for you whatever game you were playing do you is that something you worry about or is that something that you put thought into like how you want to address it or is that not even yeah. like, on your radar yet so it's i would say that i've started to think about kind of what content i put out gets what kind of viewership um and could and i'm thinking about how to develop a community on twitch and i, and I feel like having kind of one game that you play is a good way to, to develop like a consistent community and so I've been mindful of that, but at the same time, like I've, I'm already doing variety streams. So I've been streaming, streaming Fortnite and Call of Duty and Fall Guys and Among Us. And um, at some point, I'm gonna do Age of Empires uh, uh, to the like Age of Conquistadors. I don't know if you ever played that game. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, it awesome um, 
but it's basically like um, Civ, Civ or Age of the Mythology, but just anyway. Um, but uh, and you know, so I just feel like, and also now now Dungeons and Dragons too, which I know that um, everything now show does too. Yeah. Um, so I feel like the fact that I'm like starting out as a variety streamer is helpful in that way. Because then people who tune in, they don't really, like, it seems like a lot of people who are in my audience right now just don't really care what I'm streaming. They just want to hang out and chat. And they like watching, so, and, like, I, I make sure I'm doing entertaining things with the, the games I'm playing. But I think a lot of them just like to hang out and, and community build, and especially, you know, nowadays. So, um, I'm not too worried about that now. If I were to blow up in any one way, um, I, would, I would probably just stick to what, what was helping me grow at that point. Um... But I think ultimately it wouldn't change who I was really, but maybe just what I do with my time. And, and if, if I were ever were to get big like that for a certain reason, I would kind of consider it a job at some point, I would, I would imagine, or, you know, something that I had, at least and, and, and it would feel like an obligation, like a job feels like an obligation to do that specific thing at that specific time, right? So um, I, I don't really foresee myself ever having an issue with it. Um, just it would, the reasons why I would do certain things probably will change as the stream progresses. Sure, that makes sense. No. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Uh, uh, I don't know. I think um, something that has surprised me definitely um, from my stream has been the breadth of the demographic of people who are interested in watching it. Um, I think when we started this show, the Everything Now show, we sort of assumed that our main like demographic of people watching the show would be just like exa people exactly like us which are just like young 20s people who are like really into improv comedy and not much else and um i mean not that we don't have other interests but like they are you know like they have a specific interest um in improv and they're seeking it out and what i found um is that there are uh, there's a huge variety of people, like a lot of really interesting people um, of different age groups, different geography, which I guess like in hindsight now makes sense that like anybody who has access to the internet has access to Twitch and like there's, and right. I just, I guess I like, my only understanding of Twitch going into this was that it was um, just like the place where people go to watch video games and so I think I immediately right. just assumed like everybody on Twitch was like a 14 to 22 year old boy. Um, and what I've found, and maybe that's just, maybe it's because our content isn't gaming, um, that we have such an, like, sort of eclectic audience. Um, but that has just been really, really cool because then you get these, like, in our Discord, this sort of, like, mishmash of people who have this common interest in the show that, like, they can all talk about that, but then you find these sort of, like, intersections of life of, you know, different or similar political beliefs or similar taste in other types of entertainment or, um, you know, or differences. Um, I don't know, it's just really, it's really interesting, the, the community aspect of it, that like you can have sort of all the, these sort of disparate um, backgrounds coming together over like sort of like yeah. a weird thing um, and watching. So when you, when you made that realization, did you change your personality at all or how you approach the stream? I don't think so, no. I mean, I think there was a time in the development of the show where we were trying to be very intentional about trying to make the show accessible to gaming culture specifically because we knew that Twitch was like majority gaming content. So like we would have these like development meetings where, where we would talk about like how we can gamify the show and like make the show, th you know, like we have this like waiting room thing that's like an arcade. Like there are still elements of the shows like holdovers from that where you can tell like we were focused on like trying to tie in video games as a theme in some way just because we knew like that was sort of like an in to the culture, the general culture of Twitch. And I think we've sort of like moved away from that, not that we've abandoned, I mean we all of us play video games, like all five of us play video games, some of us more than others, but like, so that's not like, it's not like we don't like video games, but I think like over the, over the last year or so, we have started to move away from like feeling tied to that specific theme and more just kind of doing like having the confidence now with a, a growing community of people who like just want to see the show um, to like move away from that and not feel sort of beholden to this idea that everything has to have some sort of gamer angle um, and we can just kind of like you know like this show has I have nothing to do with gaming 
Um, right. So uh, that has been something interesting too. That I've like, I feel like we've sort of let go of that and be, been able to become a little bit. And I think Twitch also, just over the last year, has also say. changed a lot. Yeah. Like there, I think, mm-hmm. I think if we had tried to do this show two years ago, um, it, yeah. w- it would not have had the audience that it does now. Where like Twitch has become a lot more ubiquitous as just kind of like a general streaming platform and not necessarily the place where you go to just watch gaming. And who's that yeah. in your lap right now? Well, we actually have two kittens here. Um, oh this is on top of each other. Carrie, and then Freddy is escaping, it seems. Fre- Freddy's been annoyed at me. I've been, like, trying to move to make him more comfortable, but he's just been, like, yelling at me this whole time. But it looks like um, Carrie is, is out like a light. But I guess, Freddy, I guess Freddy's just going to hang there in camera. <laughs> I love these kittens. I'm so sad I'm not going to, like, know them for much longer because they're fosters. Oh, Freddy's coming back. Hey, buddy. They are precious. They love the spotlight. That is yeah. the best time to have cats, though. Like, you, you get the best version of cat right now, which is just, like, little baby cat right. mode. Yep, it's adorable. It's hard to work I've and focus while I'm working from home right now with all these cute kittens just, like, around. Right. <laughs> yeah. I am jealous. Kevin is saying, Jake is jealous that the kittens are taking his attention. And I am jealous, but also, I mean, what am I going to do? Compete with two adorable kittens? Like, <laughs> I kind of have to give it up to them. I, I can't. I can't hold the grudge. Um, Aiden wants to know, can you ask George if we can also have one, uh, have the one with the orange spot? That would be Carrie, which is this one here. Um, I, I really like Chunky, because he's the black one, and, uh, and he's just really, he's a really relaxed cat. Carrie's a little more high energy, and our, we have another cat, Tonsils, that's 12 years old, and he just apparently doesn't like other cats, but, like, and craves human attention, so I don't, I don't know exactly how he would react with a not very kill, uh, chill kitten. Um, but, but yeah, Carrie's definitely an option. The other thing too is that, is that Chunky's a little bit more independent and Carrie is friends with one of the more dependent kittens. So there's like a little bit of a dynamic there going as well. Um, so we're, so we're, we're, they all have little personalities. Yeah, they definitely do. And, and there's little clicks too that they developed, but, um, <laughs> like, like, uh, Ripley is just, he's like the lone wolf. He's, he looks like a Wolverine, actually, and he, he like just like runs around. Like he's the one that seems like he has ADHD and like just is like hyper all the time. And like, then no one really wants to mess with him. <laughs> like, so I don't know. It's it's interesting to watch all their personalities. That's super fun. I think we are gonna move on to the next. Thank uh, you. Question. We Whoa, eat the money. Legacy yes, Squid yum, coming yum. in with the hundred biddies. Uh, quick fire question. Favorite video game. Favorite video game. Um, Gorbis, do you have a favorite video game? I want to either say. I mean, I. I, this is a little dorky, I, I love Fortnite, it's so fun, I think it's like one of the best fighting mechanics that I've ever played, but also I played a lot of Age of Empires 2, so that is a, either tied for first or a runner up I would say, so, and they're very different games. Those are very different games. I've never played Fortnite, um, but I have played, the only real Battle Royale game that I've played a lot of is Apex Legends, and I really like Apex Legends. That's probably my favorite mm-hmm. game to play right now, but my all-time favorite game is probably Minecraft. I've put, I put in oh, so, yeah. I've put in so, so, so many hours of that game. I played like every night through yeah, high school and like early middle school, that game. I just like, I loved Legos growing up. Like I have a, I have a very fond, um, connection with Legos from my early childhood, and when that game came out, I was just like, "Oh, this is just this is computer yeah. Legos. It's the greatest." Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Minecraft on stream and more, lately more. Um, that that's definitely probably top three. I would have to say it's top three. So of the three. Legacy Squid says Jake uh, to play Steve as his main in Smash Bros. Yeah, I saw that they added Minecraft for Steve. Yeah, I have not played the new Smash Bros. Oh, actually, I should also say that that is um, uh, definitely in my top list of all-time favorite friends yeah. or favorite friends favorite games is uh, uh, Smash Bros. Melee. I play a lot of Melee. Yeah. I watch. Uh, competitive Super Smash Bros. Melee is like one of the only competitive video games that I watch. Like I watch like the tournaments and stuff. It's so so good. I love that game. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I've watched a lot of clips of it, but yeah, I have never been as good at Melee to do it. Like I've always, I was always third place in my group of four friends who would play it. Um, but then, but then when the newer games came out that had a little bit less lag input, I was mm. better at those. So oh, yeah. interesting. Well, I, they 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 came out with like a. Um, like a way to play melee online this like project slippy thing where you can now oh, cool. they have like online matchmaking and it's like pretty lagless it's pretty damn good so if you cool. are, it sounds like you are more of a, a later um smash bros but do you play ultimate uh ultimate like the, Is that the smash one? game yeah 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 
Is that the I haven't played Smash the newest Bros? one. I really don't know. I I kind of felt I can't remember, it, but I think that is a new one. Anyway, we got to yeah, move on. I... <laughs> um, we're going to move though? on to question five. Would you rather never have to sleep or never have to eat? Ever have to sleep 100%. Really? Because eating is fun. Yeah, I mean, but, eating okay, is fun so and then me, you save say... so much time. Let me preface this though. You never have to you never have to eat and you or you never have to sleep, but you can do both of those for pleasure if you oh. would like. So if you want to just eat your favorite food, you can do that and you know, and I would even go as far as to say like you can sort of like manifest a feeling of hunger to like, you know, kind of get that I, you know, so that you're not like you're not like full mm. like bloated where you're like I don't want to eat this delicious chocolate cake. You still get the <laughs> pleasure of eating a delicious food. But you don't ever, you're never like hungry. Your body doesn't need food if you don't, you know, if you don't want to. Same, yeah. likewise okay. with sleep. If you want to just take a, a nap to just have a dream, to like, you know, take, you know, have that experience of sleeping and waking up, you can have that, uh, but you, your body doesn't need it. So I don't know if that changes your answer at all. Uh, but those are the I ones. don't think it, it definitely makes me pause a little bit more, but I think I managed to say the same. Um, I, I mean, sleep is great, but I think I like sleep because I have to sleep, not because of sleep itself. But then food, I, I feel like I like food. I don't know, but then there's like the convenience of having... I just think that because I save so much time not sleeping, it might be just worth it, you know? And I don't like particularly love productive. sleeping. Yeah. But you'd also save yeah. time not eating, too. You know, you never have to drive to get food or cook. Right. You'd also save a lot Cook of money. Cook or grocery shop. Yeah, you would yeah. never have to grocery shop. You'd never have to spend money on food. Yeah. Things to. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it though. I think the productivity. I, I wouldn't even. It's not even productivity. It's just being able to do more stuff with my day. That's not productive too. You know, like, like I mean, I'm not gonna work eight more hours for the, for the man, but like, but I don't know. I mean, I I feel like I kind of cut corners in my sleep already, um, because I just you know it sleep is fine, but I'd rather be awake. So I don't know. I think. And I and I don't cut corners on, on eating, so I think that's that has to be my choice. Then I don't know. I think I would not eat. I think I I do enjoy. I, I, it is a tough one for me, and, and the the idea of having the extra time to not have to sleep would be really cool. I do feel like though that a lot of the things that I would want to do in like the middle of the night, like half, like the world kind of like shuts down at night. So it's not like you have the same access yeah, to everything. Like, you know, you can't like, I guess you could go shopping in the middle of the day knowing that like you'll have extra time, you know, from whatever you would have normally, you know, from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. to do work or whatever. So right. uh, there is definitely that benefit, but I just like, I like to eat food for pleasure, but I don't, I hate having to eat. Uh, yeah. Or like, I just like the idea of like when you're not hungry or like when you've got stuff to do and you're just like, oh, I have to cook or I have to drive to get food right. or I have to grocery shop. Like that stuff is just so frustrating. Um, yeah. That I think, and you would save a lot of money, but you you would potentially make more money with the productivity of, of not having to sleep. Yeah. Economists say, but mm. economists been saying that about sleep. Mm. That <laughs> Amazon's is, yeah. been saying that. Amazon, Amazon does. That. <laughs> like, Stop sleeping. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just think I think if I didn't have to eat, or if like I could have some sort of like pill that I could take, like some sort of like soylent type thing, where I could just like yeah, just pop a pill really quick and just like I'm good to go. Like I think that's coming. I think that like they're gonna. I'm really waiting for a soylent type thing that's like super fast to consume, super cheap. Like, I feel like we're on the brink of something that doesn't taste like shit. Yeah. That you can just go yeah. back and just like go through your day. And that would be, yeah, that would be amazing. I feel like it has to happen. Cause you know, there's like those, those like black stars that weigh so much in just a tiny, tiny spot. I feel like mm -hmm. we're going to figure it out here. You know, we're going to yeah. make, you know, maybe that's not, it's not that heavy, but like we're like bend space and time and whatnot, but like, you know, you could probably make stuff pretty dense to make you have your 500 calories whenever you just throw a pill in. I don't know. I bet. I bet it'll happen. I think so, too. Uh, all right. So you're saying sleep. I'm saying food. Chat, go ahead and sound off. I don't know. You probably already answered this, and I just missed it because the chat's been scrolling. But if you have an answer uh, or you want to tell one of us why we're wrong, um, go ahead. <laughs>
Uh, and here's a question from somebody called There's Always a City. That's an interesting name. And they want to know, in what our opinion, uh, what the ideal first date would be. And that is not one of our scheduled questions, but it is an interesting one, so I'll pose it to Cool Guy Gorbis. What is the ideal first date for mm. you? I feel like something where you can have an activity that you do, but you can also get to know the person. Like, I think, like, uh, I, I feel like movies are bad because you're not focusing on the person, and then dinner is kind of bad because it comes on these, like, formal, awkward stages, like, that you have to kind of be ready for and talk around in a way, which is just bad. But, like, one that I always um, kind of lean to for a first date, I mean, took coffee shop dates are fine because, you know, you're drinking a coffee and talking and just having a conversation. Um, another one that I've done is uh, bookstore dates. So just find like a cool bookstore and say like, hey, let's get coffee to go and actually just go hang out in this bookstore. And then you learn a lot of like, kind of like the, the show, you learn a lot about the other person. Like what sections do you like to go to? Like, oh, like, oh, oh, have you seen this book? Oh, and then there's just a lot of things you can talk about or like, oh, check out this title. Would you read this, you know? So there's a lot of like questions that can be asked around in a bookstore, I think. That's a really good answer. I've ever, I've actually never heard uh, of a bookstore date, but I really like that idea. I, I totally agree with what you're saying about um, movies and dinner. And I think in addition to movies, especially obviously, because you can't talk. So it's like, I mean, I guess the yeah. idea is like you watch the movie and then you talk about it after. Um, but yeah. I just, I think that is not a great way to meet somebody right off the bat. Um, similarly with dinner, I just feel like Anything where you're stationary is tricky because you have very limited yeah. um, like stimuli to move the conversation ahead. You're limited to just like whatever is in your immediate vicinity, you know, the food, whoever else is in the restaurant, and right. then the other person where I like to have, like I think, you know, they become a lot more popular now because of COVID and like you can't go to restaurants and stuff, but like a walking date, like just like a walk around the park um, or just like on the beach yeah. if you live by a beach or just like a place where you can be on the move and like there are constantly new stimuli where you can be like what do you think of that house what do you think that's a weird looking tree what is your opinion on that right look at those weird people over there um, mini golf date bowling date is what Aiden is saying I also agree with those having a having an activity yeah um, is fun although competitive activities are a gamble I feel like because potentially one person is really bad and one person is really good and that can introduce some tension um, but yeah, maybe although maybe I would say that teaching moment. Yeah, well, a teaching moment, or like you know, if you're really trying to weed out the crazy ones, like maybe you you play like really aggressive bowling and see if see if they get competitive. But the bookstore works in that regard too. You can like you can pull out some like books that you hope that they don't want to. to like I mean, for the I, I'm thinking of books I don't even like really, really want to bring up on the stream, but like there's plenty of books that you could be like, you like this and like <laughs> see what they say. You know, that is but, good. That, yeah, that's useful for like sussing out people's like true opinions on things in sort of like a subversive yeah. way. I really like, I might, I might steal that idea. I might go on a bookstore date sometime soon. It's like libertarian economics. I, you like this? <laughs> it's just like, see what they say. Yeah, you know, like, it'd be a major red flag for me. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I don't know if bookstores are, I think bookstores are open right now with masks. Um, where I am, at least. Um, yeah, I mean, Kampf nowadays it's just. Like, yeah, I w Mein Kampf was the one that came to my mind. I was just like, you know what? I don't need to bring up Mein Kampf. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I feel like bookstore dates right now would be kind of hard because it's you know obviously indoors, and like I feel I feel like the walking around date is just the best way to go about it because it's just, just people feel less anxious, and that's really the main thing you want to go for right now for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, that was a fun little deviation from our scheduled questioning, but we have reached the end of our first five questions, which means that it is time, once again, for a chemistry check. So I'm going to run the bathroom here. when we do this, too. Okay, you go to the bathroom. We're going to do a potty break. We're going to do a chemistry check. And this, of course, is a chemistry check, and if you were not here for the first one, the way that this works is you will rank... Mine and Cool Guy Gorbis's chemistry on a scale of one to five. One being zero chemistry. I guess one chemistry. It means not good chemistry. Uh, five being good chemistry, the most good of the options for how our chemistry is. Uh, the first time we did this was at the very beginning of the show before we went over any questions sight unseen. And I think we settled on like somewhere halfway between a three and a two, uh, which is pretty typical 
for the very first, you know, sort of a lukewarm response. Now it seems like uh, we're doing a lot better, which is also pretty typical after the first, not to toot my own horn here, but, uh, but chemistry typically trends up during this show, and it seems like that's what's happening here too, which is a good sign, and I agree. I think that our, you know, uh, I don't want to talk about Corbis while he is gone, but I think we're I think we're really hitting it off right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll in just a second here. There will be one more chemistry check at the very end of the show, which will be after the next five questions, uh, which will be the final and official chemistry check. Uh, but if you do still want to vote in this one, please uh, go ahead and do that now because I am going to close it out. Legacy Squid is saying, keep your pants on, Jake, and I will, although it's extremely hot in here and I am wearing a full suit. Uh, but nonetheless, I will keep my pants on. And we're going to close out that poll, and we settled on a four, which is pretty substantial improvement um, from our sort of two and a half on the last one. So good stuff. And I'm going to take my seat back in my throne now. And hey, it's me again. And if you're just joining us, this is Falling in Love, the show. Oh, I'm sorry. The show is called Falling in Love with dot dot dot. And I'm your host, and I'm Jake. And my guest today is Gorbis. And they're not back yet from the bathroom. But we've done the first five questions. There's five questions remaining. We've also done one bonus question that was submitted. Actually, I think we've done two bonus questions if you count that one about the UFO uh, information in the Pentagon that that one person asked at the top of the show. Uh, so we've done a total of seven questions now. There are five questions remaining. Uh, if you do have questions that you want to submit in the chat, throw them out. I don't, to be honest, really look at the chat all that much during the show because I try to focus on what the guest is saying and it's hard to look at my monitor that has the guest and my monitor that has the chat. But feel free to throw out questions or comments. I will occasionally take a look at the chat and if I think it's a good question, I will uh, pose it to my guest. It sounds like my guest has returned with some sort of refreshing beverage. What are you sipping on, Gorbis? Mm -hmm. It's an IPA. Uh, it is the Nan Nancy Coke Nectar India Pale P India Pale Ale. So, whoa, it's not that good. Taste? It's not that good. I've never had an IPA no. that I enjoy. Thank you. We eat the money. Yes, yum, yum. Yeah, I had one IPA that was kind of like a blackberry IPA that my sister bought that was very good and not very hoppy. So this one looked like it could be similar, but I feel like no, none of the IPAs say what they taste like. They just mm. say IPAs on them. Yeah. So this one turned out bad. Um, I regret it. But, you know, it's better than I like sipping on it. We did have a question here, a 100-bit donation from Legacy Squid, and a question attached that says, Quick fire question time, a movie that you like, but you know most people hate it. And is there a movie like that for you? Uh, hmm. I feel like there is one of the tip of my tongue that I can't quite remember. Uh, I don't know if people hate this, but um, The Silver Lining with uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence and... Silver Lining's Playbook. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, I've people kind of like that movie, though. Good. Yeah, so I don't know if... I, I'm not really, like, enough of a film critic to know what, what people hate, you know? So That's fair. I, I don't know. I don't really know if I have any controversial opinions. I'm trying to think of Although I feel like it, with the Star Wars movies, maybe. Mm, you like the original ones, the like the first three? Because those are pretty universally disliked. No, I don't really like those. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm actually, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, I have pretty standard opinions on all those movies. Yeah. Talk no, I don't think I have a good answer to this question. <laughs> I don't really have a good answer to this question either. I would the first one that comes to mind. Silver Linings Playbook has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, so you're, you're in good company. That means that you have you have good taste. Um, I'm trying to think of one that I have. Um, I mean, Legacy Squid gave The Room as an example. The Room is an interesting one because it's like famously bad. So it's like it's like a cult classic type thing where it's like it's so bad it's good. Right. Um, and I love that movie, um, but because it's bad, uh, not because I oh, think it's a, a, it's a secretly good movie. I love it because it is a <laughs> terrible movie. Um, so I don't know if that counts. Uh, a movie that I really like that 
sort of gets shit on, I feel like, by movie people and just like generally, even though I think it was also critically acclaimed, was um, Into the Wild, the one about Christopher McCandless, the guy who like goes into um, Alaska and just like dies. Have you heard about this? No. It's based on, a, I want to say a John Krakauer book, but it, it's based on a book and it's a, it's a true story about this kid who like uh, goes to like this fancy school, gets all gets really good grades and then abandons all of his money, like burns all of his money and like wanders into the Alaskan wilderness to basically just like live a life of solitude off the land. Um, and the movie, the movie is I think really good. It's got this great Eddie Vedder soundtrack, but like the, the popular take on that movie is that like fuck that guy, Christopher McCandless was just like a spoiled idiot who like didn't know what he was doing and like <laughs> wandered into the woods and like deserved to, to, to sort of like die alone in the Alaskan wilderness. And I kind of do agree with that take, but I also think that that doesn't make it a bad movie. And like you can have a movie that has a protagonist that is not necessarily like likable or you know infallible and yeah. have it still be a good movie. And I think that was an example of that. But I don't feel like we should spend too much more time on this question because it wasn't one of our official 10. So hopefully that's a satisfying answer for you, Legacy Squid. But we are going to move on to question six, which is uh, a question that I have recycled now for the last three episodes because I think it's a good one. And that is, what is an opinion or perspective of yours that has changed? Hmm. I feel like I have a couple of opinions that are on the verge of changing, but... Mm, that's interesting. Um, like what? With my work a lot. Um, so, I work in a type of, a new kind of type of re renewable energy. Not new in so far that the technology hasn't been around, but that it's been commercialized more recently, um, which is biogas, um, also known as anaerobic digestion. So basically, biogas is um, it, all of the... Basically, it's a gas that you can burn and create energy just like you would natural gas, but it comes from uh, nutrients and, and elements in the, a closed loop uh, resource. So it's carbon and methane. So essentially, uh, you produce it by putting organic waste into a big tank and stirring it. And then you put a bunch of microbes in it that can eat apart the uh, bi biogenic material, which is just like biological material of a certain type. Um, and then the bugs poop out um, like a digestive or a digested material that's kind of like compost and that you can use for um, agriculture and fertilizers. These cats are eating my cords. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but and then it also they but, like they poop out that and then they fart or they burp out um, biogas, which so because the input was organic and all, all of the organic matter you would have put you put in there would have decayed and, and to methane anyway. Uh, it's actually a carbon neutral uh, system uh, when you make that production. But the the thing that I've my job is to like advocate for that and to kind of like communicate and make policy based on that, which I think ultimately is a good greenhouse gas reduction. Except for the problem, obviously, comes when you burn fuel. You have localized environmental justice impacts that are problematic. So I'm thinking, I mean, I guess this is a kind of an opinion that's already changed about like the topic um, of like, but and I'm looking for maybe other jobs or maybe grad school to kind of get out of that for now. Um, but, and so I guess my opinion about environmental justice or like what's right to do hasn't really changed much, but I would say like, I mean, I've, I've kind of maybe not gone full circle on that issue, but, um, I've had I've learned some things that have changed my perspective about what's right to do in what settings, I guess. Is there a type of I don't know anything about renewable energy other than like the very basic <laughs> like there are windmills, there are solar panels. Um so but I'm fascinated by the idea and like obviously it's something that we like desperately need. Um so is, is there do, do you think that there's a optimal um, type of renewable energy? Is there one that you would prefer to be working in or one that you think that people should be focused on that they're not? Yeah, so within the renewable energy community, there are trade-offs with different types of technologies. Um, and and there's like I, there's been studies that have kind of like six decarbonization scenarios that include a different mixture of renewables 
as well as nuclear energy to kind of meet energy needs without polluting carbon and, and greenhouse gases as well. Um, and that ranges from, you know, actually most of those scenarios have 90% wind and solar. So, you know, the standard, what you would think about for renewables would hold true still. But that last 10% and in fluctuating amounts of their percentages, that bigger 90% chunk fluctuate based on like price that you want to um, go into and where, where, where the technology will develop as, you know, we do more research and development and things like that. Um, so for me, I think like, you know, a lot of times building solar panels and, and wind turbines are kind of cost prohibitive because if you were to make that your renewable energy focus, you'd have to replace a lot of the appliances and update all of the buildings to run on different infrastructure, which just takes time and money. Like imagine like you'd have to replace all of the gas stations we have with electric vehicle stations if you banned gas vehicles. And that's a huge undertaking. We've developed that over like a whole century, essentially. Um, so that that's more expensive, but then you don't have as many localized, you know, air pollutants that would make people have cancer and asthma and you know <laughs> issues that we should care about as a progressive. Right. I mean, as progressives, for certainly, um, and that I do care about. And then, but then the, I mean, there's there's it's complicated even within that. I mean, even wind and solar, you have to mine lithium to store extra renewable energy and batteries, because essentially, like when renewable energy is it fluctuates and you sometimes you produce too much of it and sometimes you don't produce enough of it based on how much demand is and how much supply there is right so um you need batteries in order to kind of manage the output of the grid of the electric grid essentially like if you don't like have the exact amount of voltage that's required by and demanded like the whole system gets messed up and like that's why you have blackouts um so you need to have batteries and the problem with batteries is that you have to mine lithium and lithium is in this, the global south and Tesla's already taking advantage of, I think, Bolivia in that regard with their lithium deposits and they're trying to privatize all those national, what should be national or like human resources. Um, and, you know, when you mine lithium, there's, you basically have to drain all of the water in the region or not the region, but like in that, in that area um, to, to, to do that mining which there's also obviously environmental justice concerns with that. So there's a lot of like um, democratic socialist like literature that kind of like goes into those issues of land rights and um, and sovereignty and imperialism in the question of renewables. And there's a lot of good literature on that. But in terms of like what the optimal mix is, it's super hard to know what's right. You know, because like if you did buy more biogas, which would have localized, um, you know, harms the people who live by like a, a plant that burned it or like by a highway that used vehicles that used that well you know they would suffer but then the people in bolivia by the lithium mines maybe wouldn't have to suffer as much but it's 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 hard to like really quantify a lot of those things um and honestly that's where i'm going next to my career is kind of figuring some of that stuff out so that's awesome <laughs> thank god i think Thank God that there are people who are doing that. Uh, yeah, I hope you figure it out. I really hope you figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel at this point like I'm, I'm, I, I you know how there's that effect. I don't remember what it's called. Where like maybe it's the Dunning Kruger effect, but like where you, like people who are really smart, in who are people who are really dumb, think they're dumb, and then when you get a little smarter, you think you're really smart, but you're not as smart as you think you are, and then as you get really smart, you realize you're stupid. Yes. And you don't know anything. And then you kind of like go into being an, being an expert in something. So I'm feeling I'm like, I don't know if I'm on that first hump of that curve or if I'm actually becoming an expert in some things, but like I've got a lot to learn still, but I think I'm starting to like have a grasp of like, cause I, I, I really think that like, this is like one of the most, I mean, I hate to kind of talk in like lofty, like ethical moral terms, but like with my time I, on, this, on this planet, I want to be helping to solve climate change. Cause it's gonna, it's, it's, we have to. So it's like, um, so I, I, I feel a little more confident that I know that what I'm doing is going to be a good thing because over the course of our history, you know, o like oil majors have lied to us and deceived us. So I don't really want to be in that category still. And I, and I'm a little worried I am because I'm working for an industry company, like an association. So, hmm. um, anyway, I'm a little bit of like a, a ranting here on a soapbox, but yeah, but yeah, I, I think I'm maybe like close to being able to figure all of these things out, but we'll see. That's awesome. That's a great answer. And I feel like I, I learned a lot about renewables just tangentially from that. Good. And and I do have to take the moment to pub my environmental news reading streams oh, on Sundays. Um, yes, I, I, you know, because it's on the topic. On so I, 
all week when I'm at work, I work 40 hours at you know this Renewable Energy Trade Association, and I, people send me articles and I see articles on LinkedIn. And I just throw them in a Discord channel so you, people can read them throughout the week. But then I like go and I read them with chat on every Sunday. So um, I would invite you and anybody else to come to come hang in uh, and talk about stuff. Check it out. Yes, please. Someone, Aiden, would you please uh, shout out Corbus's Twitch channel? I don't know if our shout out function. It's like kind of fucked, but uh, shout out Garbus's channel. Please go follow. Um, we'll do plugs again at the end um, for everybody, but yeah, that sounds awesome. I definitely want to check that out. Uh, Please, beautiful. I feel like we're... Oh, I don't know. Uh, I was trying to think of something that my perspective has changed on. I've done this question now three times, so I'm like starting to like <laughs> run out of things that... But I feel like if I think for a second, um, what is something that my perspective has changed on. Um, this is sort of a superficial one, but I like mushrooms now. I used to really not like mushrooms. I used to, I had a horrible um, like food poisoning experience with oh. a mushroom ravioli one time as a child, and that made me really hate <laughs> mushrooms. And I don't know why that makes me laugh, but for some reason that's funny. <laughs> it is. Well, it's I'm sorry. Time mushrooms I... have come up. No. Uh, it, is, it is kind of funny. The, just the idea of puking in general is like kind of a funny thing in the way that pooping and farting are both funny. Um, but yeah, I got like, r ravioli is also a funny word, is the chat is pointing out. True. Um, why did I include this question again? Asked Aiden. I think this is mostly just because I'm interested in what other, I think change, uh, specifically now, the idea of changing your mind about something has become so like sacrilegious in culture like you're like not really yeah. supposed to be i mean like people always say like you should be able to change your mind but then like in reality whenever anybody does do it like they are immediately be called a hypocrite and like sort of cast out i of hate that shit. social scene there where it's like everybody's like you should be able to do this but nobody ever wants to actually let anybody do it um so for that reason i just feel like you know, to, to put somebody on the spot and like make them say something. And it can be as, <laughs> it can be as superficial as just changing your opinion on the taste of, of mushrooms um, or something as profound as like sort of like reconciling right. your personal beliefs about your career and your life. Um, but I think it's just like a good exercise to practice. Um, and I do it to myself too, because I, I want to sort of just like get into the mindset of a person who can feel comfortable acknowledging changes in perspective um but yeah i think it's just good i think it's good i think it's good to for people to see people reconciling with uh changing their opinions on things and like walking themselves through like how those those changes happen um so i think i think that's it's a good thing to include so i think i'm going to keep including it but i am going to have to start thinking of more things that my opinions are changing on but with that, well, so, honestly, props to you to doing different things every time. <laughs> That'd be thank difficult. you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I think I'm gonna like in the next time like start coming up with them in advance so that I don't have to just like sit here and think of some superficial ones because I feel like there are some. Uh, don't click that. That's coolguygorpus.com. Not an actual website. Uh, people are having fun in the chat. <laughs> I am gonna move on to our next question. Um, I think it's uh, yeah, it's this one. Um, if you could travel back in time to witness any event, what would it be? Hmm. Any event in history. And you can't change it. You, you're, it's like ghost mode, where you, you are invisible, you are a silent observer, but you can witness it. So maybe this would have to be a, a, a time period. That's fair. But it would be, it. it would it would be nine. It would be it would be nine months before uh, two thousand twenty years ago when Christ was born to see if it was really, um, what do they call it? Conception. Miraculous. Something conception. conception. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. 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 I would. I think it's. Miraculous. I don't know. I, I don't want to be a. I don't want to be a creep about immaculate. it. Like, immaculate. Immaculate conception. I, is that it? I want to say immaculate incarnate. Immaculate. In it is. It is immaculate according to just a tiny taste. Not miraculous. Although it is miraculous. The fact that it's immaculate. But immaculate. Immaculate conception. Mm. Wait, that doesn't sound right to me. It doesn't sound right to me either. <laughs> saying it out loud. <laughs> it's. Oh yeah, immaculate conception. There you go. 
Sorry, chat. So I didn't mean to doubt you. Just a tiny taste was right. Immaculate conception. Because it's like really clean in the way that sex is all gross and slimy. <laughs> it's immaculately clean. <laughs> yeah, it's like God just like got in there, no juices or anything. He just put it in there. I, I Is there any scripture on that? Um, on what? On I don't the, know if we know for how sure. How it worked? How clean it was. Oh, how clean it was? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm just basing I, I, it on I just... the word immaculate. But I don't, I'm not <laughs> even actually sure if immaculate means clean. I just, that's how, you know, like I've heard like, you know, like if you walk into a really clean hotel room, it's like immaculate, you know, it's an immaculate hotel yeah. room or something like that. But I don't know if that's what that word necessarily means. Yeah. Not even any mess, just baby, says Tiny Taste. Yeah, mate, well, it's immaculate conception, not immaculate birth. So presumably the birth was a normal, <laughs> gross birth, the way that birth typically is. It's the conception that was immaculate. Um, anyway, I, that's an interesting, so you would want to, so you would want to see the conception or the birth? I mean, I don't know. I would want to see the conception. But what would you see? Like what? What you know? Like I don't know if there's if it's immaculate. Presumably, there's not a lot of physical evidence. This is why I wanted to to um, have a time period because I would need to watch probably for like two months to see if she had sex with anyone else. Mm, just and kind of like and, and then I would know. Yeah. So and I don't want to be I don't want to be creepy about it. But like I don't know like the social standards for what was creepy. 2020 years ago maybe it would <laughs> that shouldn't impact what's creepy or not <laughs> but uh but uh yeah no i think i would have to know yeah I, that would be that would definitely answer a lot of questions <laughs> but yeah. also i mean i wouldn't even be preaching when i got back more questions um mm -hmm. for me i would like to witness the asteroid that uh killed the dinosaurs or allegedly killed the dinosaurs nice um, I just think, like, that would be, I mean, not even because, like, not to prove, like, oh, it did or didn't kill the dinosaurs, like, I don't really care, like, something killed them, I'm not, I'm not really hung up on that, but I think that is, like, one of the most, like, insane natural events in the yeah. history of the planet. Like, the idea of, like, witnessing an explosion that powerful, like, something that, like, essentially just, like, reset all biology on the planet yeah, um, would be insane. It'd be, like, the most insane, like, uh, yeah. like, fireworks show ever, just, like, to witness something like that. Um, and if I'm a ghost, I'm, like, wow, yeah. invulnerable, where I can, like, you know, I don't immediately become deaf and blind and disintegrate, but I can just kind of, like, see it from sort of a, uh, you know third party invulnerable perspective like what a i feel like it would it, it would give a lot of you know it make me feel small in, a, in the way that they like say that astronauts you know who are standing on the moon have sort of like a renewed perspective of of reality and like humanity for having seen it from like such a perspective i feel like it would have that sort of effect yeah yeah and then that actually makes me kind of think more about that question and like what I would actually want to see like mm. for my own sake there's a lot of things like yeah a lot of places you can go with that and if you were actually immune to things maybe like I don't know could I be on the moon I don't know could I I guess no. yeah like witnessing the moon landing from the moon would be kind of cool like, just <laughs> yeah, cool, with yeah. Them. like seeing them come down like you're there like a couple minutes early and you get to like watch them like land and like step out that would be pretty sick if it happened. If and you're like, not in a suit. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're like, not in a suit, and you're just like, hey sorry, guys. I'm just here to watch. Don't mind me. <laughs> uh, Legacy Squid says, I would watch the Big Bang and see the world be created. That would be so cool. Yeah, that would be cool. I don't really know where you would, you would be watching the Big Bang from, if like that is what created the universe. So that that would be kind of that would be interesting. Like, where are you if the universe doesn't exist yet? You'd have to be God, and then so maybe this is just a loophole to become God. Yeah, uh, and that guy's good answer, good cheat code to become God. Uh, yeah, Joseph, whose name I will never know how to say. Joseph? Is it Joseph? Jo there's just so many letters that come after the part that says Joe. Um, says I would go back in time. Uh, to the time when I was deciding when to go back in time t 
to and watch until I saw where I decided to go. Whoa, that is really hard to oh. understand. It's pronounced <laughs> Joseph Sioj. Is it just Joseph Joseph backwards? I don't know. I'm having a really hard time. Just a tiny says Tay says they want to go to Hitler's bunker, April thirtieth, nineteen forty five, uh, presumably to see uh, Hitler kill themselves. Is that what happened on that day? <laughs> I would, I would assume so, but I don't know. Or escape to Argentina. Okay, um, so I think those are good answers. I, I think witnessing, you know, having evidence of the Immaculate Conception would definitely be, I mean, at least for your own sake. Then, then you have the struggle of, like, having to come back to reality and, like, you know, having anybody believe you. You know, like, just saying, like, I saw it. It really well, happened. But at least I think I would not say sake, you would know. I think I would not say anything, and then when I heard people talking about it, I'd be like, <laughs> if only they knew. <laughs> like, I don't know, I think that's the extent, that's the extent of it. Or, like, people would be like, you know, like, Jesus was created without ever being conceived by, you know, a living being. I'd be like, yeah, sure, like, I don't know. I just like it'd be, I would feel, I would feel, it's like a power trip. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, it would definitely be a very, very powerful knowledge to have. Uh, Alright, I like both those answers, and I like the answers that we were getting from the chat. Uh, with that, we are going to move on, though, to question number eight, which is, of course, uh, another question that I've recycled from previous uh, episodes because I think it's a good one, and that is, what is a valuable piece of advice that you've been given? A valuable piece of advice. Yeah, I have... I have one that comes from my mom. Um, she's really like my mentor in all ways, but um, this is one that she's, so she, like I said, she's a emotional wellness counselor and she actually uses this story in a lot of her classes too, um, to kind of talk about how we think about our thinking. Um, and so I, I guess I'll just start with the story. So when I was little, I actually had a lot of anger management issues, which um, is not true of me today. And I'm, I would just, almost the opposite is true today, but, um, but so I, one one Christmas, Santa got me, you know, a a mini drum set for kids, and I loved it, and I was I was ex excited to you know get really good at the drums, and then at one point I got so so mad that I went into the basement, destroyed the drum set, threw it against the drywall, and just was a raging twerpy little kid and was destroying things, and um, and my mom in that moment instead of, you know yelling at me, she, she opened the door to the basement and said, like, George, 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 come here, quick, 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 come here. And I was, like, obviously confused. I thought I was going to yell that. So I, I went to the bottom of the stairs and looked at her, and she just looked urgent, like she wanted me to come see something. So I, I, I ran up the stairs, and she hustled me over to the back screen door, and she and she opened the door and said, and she went like this above my head. She went, like, like gathering, gathering above my head, and she goes, oh, open the door, open the door, and she throws it out. And then it slams the door behind herself and says, Woo, like, thank God, George, something was covering up your sweetness. Like we got it we got it out. And and I was my, my brother and sister were like, What? <laughs> they were confused. I was probably the same had a similar face, but after a minute I kinda of realized like, Oh yeah, I feel I don't feel mad anymore. She's because she asked me, like, do you feel you still feel mad about the drum set? And I said, Oh no, I don't really feel mad about the drum set anymore. All of a sudden, that, that, it's out there, I'm in here. And then, and I kind of, I, she kind of said like, you know, you, you don't have to go along with what your brain tells you. And like, you, you know, you can react to your emotions if you can see it. And so when you're in a bad mood, just realize like something's covered up your, your innate sweetness and then try to get rid of it if you can. And I said, okay, yeah, I'll try. And then, and then I was not upset after that. Um, and so, yeah, so that's just, um, I think the, the advice is that it's, it's, it's really good for your well-being if you can kind of try to witness your own thoughts and and release in your emotions and to kind of be witness at like a higher level of just like what that means and if you should you know believe that or see perspectives in a different way and try to like get out of your own frame a bit um, and or you know sometimes just like see that you're getting worked up by something and be okay with the fact that you're getting worked up and, and accept the fact that something is wrong that you need to address, but then kind of try to take yourself out of like the reactive moment and just kind of address it with your values and kind of with yourself as opposed to your emotive self. Um, so, and my mom would not say that, you know, you shouldn't be emotive at all. It's just that you should 
allow yourself to feel those things and be able to recognize when you are so that you act out of a different place if you want to. That is great advice. That's super profound. I think that's going to actually help some people in the chat maybe. I, I mean, I, I've heard similar like concepts expressed a different way. I love that, like the visualization of like physically removing like the like bad vibes or however you want to like you know this yeah. is like this physical embodiment of like a cloud of negativity that can be like physically removed and then displaced in some way i think that especially for yeah. kids um but i think right with anybody it like helps to uh like with anything like visualization i think is a really powerful tool um and, and that's that's really cool i think i might actually try that someone is saying that my mom showed me how to overclock my vaporing for matter matter clouds <laughs> which is also very you zoom it up for 4.3 to 4.9 they're like Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> i know about vapes <laughs> uh that's really cool too um uh, <laughs> uh, yeah that is really good i had a piece of advice that was like similarly superficial um, that I was gonna share and I, I lost it because I just really love that, the idea of your mom showing you how to overclock your face <laughs> and like trying to understand what that means. <laughs> um, shit, what was my advice that I got? Oh, it was um, just how to get rid of pickups. <laughs> Oh, um, nice. I think I actually gave this exact advice uh, to your uh, to Aiden um, because uh, they had the hiccups uh, during one of our games of Among Us. But uh, for anybody in the chat, and I don't know if you know this, Corvus, but surefire way to get rid of hiccups 100% uh, of the time is you breathe in uh, as much as you you possibly can, like it's like until it's basically physically painful. To, to breathe in anymore. Your lungs are at maximum, maximum capacity. Like oh, it, you physically cannot breathe in any more air. And you hold that for as long as you can. So it's a combination of those two things. Your lungs are completely full and you're holding it as long as you can. And when you can't hold it anymore, you just exhale and your hiccups will be gone. Guaranteed, 100%. Did you know this? Cool. I think I've heard that before, but I, I didn't ever think about how full you had to make your breath, like to the point of like pain even. Like, I, I haven't say, heard that. It doesn't so. have to hurt, I would say. I mean, I just don't, like, I, I don't know why this works. Um, my uh, layman's theory is just, like, the like the action of hiccuping is, like, a quick breath of air in. Like, your body just, like, automatically just pulls in air. And so the idea is, like, if your lungs are already at maximum capacity, like, your body will innately not be able to pull in more air. And so, like, that impulse will be gone. Um, mm. don't know if that's real. I've heard a lot of other uh, cures for hiccuping that I've tried that didn't work. My brother for a long time convinced me that if you drink water upside down, um, that that would cure the hiccups, <laughs> uh, which is really hard to do. You like have to like stick your leg between your head or your head between your legs uh, and like drink a cup of water. It doesn't work really good. And then obviously scaring uh, somebody or like getting scared is like sort of like an old wives tale about how to get rid of hiccups also have never been able to do that effectively but there you go for anybody in the chat whoever has hiccups yeah. wants to get rid of them uh, that is advice that I still to this day uh, take and I learned that from some random kid at my summer camp yeah and if it, if chat tries it and it doesn't work what should they do if you try that and it doesn't work you should Come to my house and kick my ass. Uh, so with that, we are going to move on to the ninth question, the penultimate question of the evening. Wow, this this episode is actually going right on time. It's shockingly. Um, we are on the ninth question. We have eight minutes until this is two hours. Uh, we can obviously go over, but this the timing is finally working. Uh, if you could remove one law and create. One law. Thank you. We eat the money. Yes. Be? And yum, before yum. we answer this question, we are going to do another quick fire question from Legacy Squid, who has discovered that I will acknowledge any donation of bits. Um, <laughs> so a one, a one hundred uh, bit donation for the quick fire question of what is your favorite anime? Uh, I haven't watched a ton, but Code Geass is the is the one that I watched all the way through. Um, it's it's one where this guy Lelouch is at like a boarding school and he has like a ability to control people's minds and 
that's one premise of the show, and he's got to keep that power secret. But at the same time, there's a bunch of mecha robots that are controlling the city, and this Britannica, like Europe, Euro, like white Euro centric empire, is like dominating Japan, and they have to fight back as like eleven the colony that is Japan and kind of reclaim their sovereignty. So yeah, it's it's it made me cry. I watched it in like eighth grade, and I like I, after the show was done, I I I felt a loss for because for the characters knowing that I couldn't watch anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, so, that one of those, is a yeah. glowing review. What's it called again? Yeah, Code Geass. So it's um, C O D E G E A S S. Code Geass. So, yeah. I might be Geass too. I'm not sure, but once I would check that out. For me, it is uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, which I guess is having a resurgence now because it was recently added to Netflix. I was recommended it to one of my uh, by one of my friends in college. I watched it a couple years ago, and it's extremely, extremely, extremely good. It's a TV show, and then there's also a movie after you watch the show. There's like a series, I don't know, there's probably like 16 episodes or something, and then you're rewarded for watching the 16 episodes with this like feature-length movie that's fucking awesome and insane and really cool. Um, my brother and, has had recommendations of that as well, yeah. Um, it's on my list. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, that's a quick fire question, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. We are going to, I was almost about to move on to our next question, but we have to answer the question at hand, which is, if you could remove one law and create one new law, what would they be? I'm trying to think of something that would, like, fix climate change in one law. It'd be kind of a hard thing to... Oh, um, so the one law I would want to create is environmental rights, um, and this actually Ecuador has that, um, and which is helpful because they have a lot of rainforest. But I I can't remember if it's if humans have in their country a right to nature or if it's that nature itself has rights to be protected, mm. but. Um, I, I can't quite remember actually, and I, and when I, I was in Ecuador brief, briefly for a study abroad, and but I was I heard about that, but I didn't. It wasn't like I was studying constitutional law there, um, but making that kind of like that right a law, I think would solve a lot of other things. Although honestly, like if I had to make one law, like a like an economic bill of rights, if that's one law, that would probably be the one. Um, and you know, I feel like. An economic bill of rights could include environmental things. So maybe that's where I would I would put my main focus. And then if I could remove one law, um, honestly, like a lot of environmental law has been really badly decided, um, and it's based on like the harms that are a consequence of pollution, as opposed to kind of the duty to protect at the onset of production of things so i would change i would make it the environmental law not retroactive or not reactive as, and but instead proactive um and i'm not sure exactly how to articulate that to into like one law but yeah i would i would make it change that way hmm. i almost understand what that means i like i'm trying to speak on that a little bit more so uh, right now, and I only took one environmental law class, so it's, it's part of the reason why it might not be clear is because I don't understand it fully either. But right now, it's if you emit something and it causes a harm or it exceeds a certain level, that's when court can get involved and say you've done something wrong and you should be punished or you should cease doing an activity. Um, as opposed to kind of something like you cannot hurt the environment in this way you cannot pollute I don't like you cannot do this pollution um, but I think that's honestly too simplistic of a of an like a like a description of that and I think that's because I don't understand it enough there's people who I if I if I could truly make a law that I, I would love to see I would probably confer with people beforehand so I would there's something where I would talk to probably my environmental law professor and a few other people <laughs> um, yeah, about this I guess beforehand. It's, it like, is that, a hard question conceptually is so like Laws are so explicit, and like I don't know any actual, yeah. like, the words of like <laughs> like the ex exact objective wording of any laws. But like I I understand what you're saying now. I get I get what you're saying that like basically like you'd rather that uh, companies 
had to ask for permission rather than for forgiveness for yeah, know, yeah. For doing bad shit like things that are preventative as opposed to um, punishing uh, for for yeah fucking up the environment, which makes sense. That, That's a really good way to put it. Totally. Um, yeah, I like that idea. Mine would be, I think the law that I would get rid of would be, um, prohibition of schedule one drugs. Um, oh, nice. Uh, like I don't, I think weed is scheduled. I don't know. I don't know the exact list of schedule one drugs, but like for the most part, um, Pretty sure it's one. like, I think prohibition of like most drugs should be abolished. Um, I just feel like those things could be regulated and getting rid of the, like getting rid of the prohibition would bring a lot of the like sort of like dark money economy, you know, like it would, it would solve a lot of issues with like cartels in Mexico and like just general yeah. like crime and, and sort of the, um, like the, I'm forgetting the word for it, but like the, uh, black market stigma, the stigma that comes with like oh. addiction and, um, just yeah. like the like the shame and stuff that are involved with those drugs, that like I think people would be able to get help for the, those kind of things a lot more. Legalize all drugs, yeah, essentially. Um, and then a law that I would add, maybe I don't know if it's a law, but making um, making election day a national holiday would be pretty good, so that people don't totally. Camp uh, I, I mean, that's like kind of basic. Probably wouldn't affect that many people, change that many people's lives, but it's just like, why is it not? I think it would change a lot of people's it lives. It would definitely, yeah. I mean, like the idea like that there are so many people who can't vote because they have to go to work. Like, it, it absolutely, I think in the grand scheme, it would definitely change a lot of people's lives just because certain people would get elected and other people wouldn't get elected just because uh, more people would be able to vote. Um, yeah, yeah it's, well, it's, like it's almost like um, butterfly effect type. Thing. Sorry. Yeah, it's almost like asking a genie for an extra wish because if you know if people can vote and have more access to voting and aren't suppressed, like those uh, more laws would change. You know, so yeah, it's, it's pretty good, good to answer the question. You're I mean, gambling on the idea that like those more people who are, who are voting have the same interests uh, as you. You know, like it could right. go both ways. There's more people voting, but they they aren't necessarily right. automatic voter registration. Says Aiden. Yeah, that's a good one too. Um, yeah, I would. I'd probably insane. say, I'd probably say like the first of all, like I mean, I know I know you're progressive as well. So like a, a lot of you probably know this. So a lot of the progressive proposals are are majority opinions in this country yeah. right now, and so I, I feel like it would be a safe bet now. But um, and and also like the the, the people who are able to access um uh the polls in that scenario would probably be people who are more closer to the average person because they're you know more working class people and like people who would have been barred otherwise so you know I, the more you can kind of have people with the kind of like that like typical or like or at least like or <laughs> even even like you know impoverished lifestyle to give them the authority like the the ability to vote you know i feel like that has to at some level regardless of what the political state of the country is like making that benefit in terms of laws yeah i i think so. that i that definitely resonates with me i pretty much agree like if there's a reason that you're not able to vote it's likely because you're disenfranchised in one way or another and so to like give any yeah. more power to people who are just inherently disenfranchised to the point where they're unable to vote because the election day is not a uh, national holiday like i think you're right like if you if you're affected by that in a way it means that you know like you have to work on that day basically um and if you don't yeah. have to work then you probably you know then you're probably doing okay that actually made me think that you should get some kind of politician on this show and ask them these questions whoa that would be cool i whoa. would love if whoa. you're a politician <laughs> or if you know a politician in the chat um, <laughs> who would come do this uh i would love to have you on the show i would love to fall in love with you um uh, maybe maybe i should hit up wow i should get nithia <laughs> Chris, do you think Nithya would do the show? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that'd be sick. I would love, I would love to make that happen. I'm gonna do some research, see if I can find some like really like low tier um, local politician who might 
be willing to come through the show for two yeah. hours. I feel like people will learn a lot, you know? I agree. I think it could be really fun. Maybe if I rebranded away from like a dating type show and it was more of a sort of standard, but the love thing is like kind of the whole thing. I don't know. We're going to move on yeah. to our final question. It's now 9.03, but I still feel like we're in the two hour ballpark. So I feel like we're doing good. This is our ultimate question, the final question. What do you think will be the biggest cultural change that we see in our lifetime? The biggest cultural shift we see in our lifetime. Um, and whatever I, that means to you, it's like a pretty broad question. Yeah, um, it, it's gonna be uh, with regard to climate change for sure. Um, Cause I think we're gonna see a lot of the effects of it before we're dead and uh, and also I'm not super confident that our energy consumption will be able to be maintained at its current level based on just like the supply of energy that is available and also like the supply of non or of, of, of the supply of renewable energy so i think we're either going to start to see a culture of kind of like mass civil disobedience and, and general strikes because people are going to not see the energy transition happen or they're going to see massive um, energy sh like energy shutoffs and people are going to be more rad radicalized either way in that scenario um, or we are going to ra ra like radically change our consumption habits across the world and will uh, the cultural shift will be more in, in terms of like a sustainable vision uh, and understanding that like a culture of like respect for nature and kind of like an inter interconnected with this with an intertwinement of nature and human interact in, in, in human activity um that will be required so i, I don't want to like have like a doom and gloom outlook i think it's possible to kind of reduce our consumption to the point where we can you know not run down a, a darker path but um i think one of those two will have to happen so yeah i think i mean i i pretty much, i have a pretty similar perspective i think sort of like a coupling of two ideas um or like maybe like three i i think just generally there will be a um, massive migration, um, just like very large scale migration, which will have a bunch of different effects. But like the one that immediately comes to mind is just like a, in the way that America has sort of become like a cultural amalgamation of like a bunch of different cultures. Um, I think the, the, the world in a more broad sense will like become, I don't know, it's hard to say because you see so many countries becoming more and more nationalistic like being like sort of like receding into um, into into tradition and, and and nationalism but i think it's sort of like an uphill battle when you have just like ease of access to to international travel and of course now there's a global pandemic so like you know you can't get on a plane but like the idea that like now you can travel internationally on a relatively cheap plane as opposed to you know a boat or a train coupled with increased communication you know like global communication global instant communication like having having international uh wi-fi you know musk and like people like him are trying to have like global wi-fi wherever you are like everybody will have access to the internet coupled with like instant translation technology where like now you don't necessarily need to learn other languages to communicate with people who don't speak the same language like you have technology that's able to like instantaneously translate audio and, and like yeah. translate it into another language like all of these factors i feel like are sort of trending towards a, a reality that like has where the where physical geographic borders are a lot more um permeable where like the the limitations yeah. the physical limitations of like how do i get there i can't speak the language like i'm not familiar with the culture because i don't have access to like the internet like all these like things that are um you know traditionally preventing people from moving around are going to are becoming less and less and then you couple that with the fact that people are going to need to move because like you said like we're going to be facing a uh you know like climate change is going to make a lot of places uninhabitable and make a lot of other places like more inhabitable in ways um like places like in the Ar in the arctic will be like more warm i guess this is a tough person who knows zero about how climate change works. No, I don't know if that's no, true. 
No, you're pretty accurate in that, yeah. Uh, but just like I feel like people are going to be moving around a lot more, uh, either because they can or because they have to. And I think what that is going to be leading to is, for better or worse, like a lot of commingling of culture. Um, and so we're going to see um, in the way that America has sort of um, either stolen or, or uh, you know, how, whatever your perspective is on how America has created its culture, um, I think we're going to see that sort of like on a more international scale. It'll be interesting. There'll be there'll be a lot of very interesting art, I think, uh, as a result of that. Yeah, a lot of uh, multinational corporate campaigns that will become our culture, which is exciting. You know, I'm excited yeah, for the golden so arches so to be my religion. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon <laughs> will take over. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, that is definitely the scary part: multinational corporations taking over. Um, but. Yeah, that is really scary, I think. But we'll be, we'll, you know, it'll be lots of different languages in the multinational corporations, so that's good. That's like, true. You'll be, able to talk, you'll be able to buy from Amazon in every language that you could possibly use. <laughs> any language that, you want. That will be really cool. Um, but yeah, sort of a, a similar, maybe like a slightly uh, um, optimistic perspective, but I think, yeah, it's hard not to have sort of a doomer perspective. Um, someone just posted a clip that says, anyway, I would be an octopus. I don't, oh, that's from, that's from what else. We talking about <laughs> what we would be reincarnated as. Um, Legacy Squid says, did you know that Antarctica is the biggest, biggest desert in the world? And no, I did not know that. Did you know that, Corvus? I, I didn't know feeling, that. I have um, a feeling you would know that. Yeah, because deserts are, uh, because they're barren of, of foliage is like the definition of a desert. Ah, so it can be cold. Yeah, and I would expect like outside of this world it would be the moon, at least that we've traveled to. <laughs> wow, that is one big desert. So, get on to chat. I'm so get wrecked, chat. And on that note, on the, on the <laughs> note of the chat getting wrecked, uh, I do think that was our last question. So we made it uh, to the end. There is one more production piece of this show uh, before we get to our plugs and our final send off. And that is of course the final chemistry check um, so, if you missed the first two, and this is check. the part of the show where you decide if we're in love. Um, this is the, the screen that is presented. This is the big important and part of the show. Is, it's the there's a poll check. to see how much Jake and I have. You will be voting <laughs> now on so a scale of one to five. Ooh, one, four? of course, okay. being the least see, we started at chemistry, two, three, five so being perfect, perfect chemistry. Five. Uh, how you feel? Uh, if, if uh, we're yeah, you are. Right now, but uh, now you're not. We've had two chemistry texts thus far. One at the very beginning of the show before we did any questions. I think we landed somewhere in the It'll ball be kind of funny. Of two and a half to five. three. Like, Sorry, Jake. I'm on the second. Uh, we did. Uh, I think like a four. This is from. This is not from tonight. No, this is from. Um, but it'd be kind of funny. It's like we're sort of like sticking at a four on this one. So it seems like we kind of just like slapped it on the last five questions. But that being said, we we had a pretty strong first round. So. Uh, I am going to close this poll in right the now. next five Where's, seconds. So, right so nuclear goo uh, coming in with the third. Right now, this, the red is not shown, but. Can they hear you? Can they hear you? Uh, and I don't Actually, wait, they can't. Close this poll. They definitely can. Oops. <laughs> I, I can hear you. I don't know if they can hear you. Um, gotcha. Guys, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm going to close the poll now. People are saying hi, Aya. <laughs> People are saying hi, Aya. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> she says, what's up? What's I up, didn't see Aya? it like Welcome that. I'm not that bro <laughs> You're putting words into my mouth. I mean, you can put the headset on. <laughs> and we're back. And cool guy Gorbis, we got a four and a one three, but mostly a four, which is pretty darn good. How does that I think make it's a good feel? starting spot. You feel good For our first that? time, um... Yeah, I feel I feel really good for our first first kind of like you know formal introduction to each other, and I think there's lots of for us so. to grow together. Truly, absolutely. Well, you you are the first of these of my guests who I really well. First of all, we've never met in in real life, which is unique of the guests that I've had so far. Our relationship is entirely online, and we haven't known each other <laughs> for more than a couple of weeks. So I I would say of anybody that I've had on the show so far, I've been most impressed with our chemistry. Uh, just like having done the show, so thank you, thank you so much for having come on. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. It was, it was a good time. Um, is there anything before we sign off that you would like to? First of all, I want to say if you haven't already, go 
follow Cool Guy Gorbis on Twitch. Uh, cool Guy Gorbis is their username, so you can just do twitch.tv slash Cool Guy Gorbis, presumably, to find them. Throw them a follow. Uh, Gorbis, do you want to just like say what you do on your stream? Yeah, so um, I stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, for those streams, I stream video games. Uh, I stream Fortnite and Call of Duty, so a lot of shooters. But I also do Minecraft streams, Among Us streams, and Fall Guys streams. So um, my thing is just I like to be silly and have fun playing games. And um, usually I'm, I try to be pretty good at them, but sometimes I just mess around too. So there's lots of lots of different types of content. Um, and we're just starting out, so lots of room to grow and get a kind of... Um, get involved in the, in the community while it's still small, so I would, I would say that as well. And then the last thing is that on Sundays, I do an environmental news reading stream. Um, I, I, my professional job is in renewable energy uh, management, and so I know a lot about renewable energy and kind of the energy transition. I'm also a progressive, and I support the Green New Deal, so if you want to hear um, that political and uh, you know technical perspective on my channel on Sundays, um, I, do, I do that reading as well. And it's, it's um it's me reading out loud articles and things and also just kind of interjecting my own thoughts as I go. So um, I would recommend you come check it out. Hell yeah, that's on Sundays. What time? So Sundays for me, my philosophy is that um, I need I need as much sleep as possible. But as soon as I wake up, <laughs> I stream. So usually it's been like between uh, 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. Um, on Sundays, but um, 7 p.m. is a consistent time throughout the week. Beautiful. All right, cool. Well, you heard it there first, uh, or maybe you didn't hear it there first. Maybe you've heard it before. But it, <laughs> either way, you've heard it. Uh, please go give Cool Guy Gorbis a follow. Uh, I will do my sign off now, which is, of course, uh, you're watching the Everything Now show. This is our stream. We stream every Sunday and Wednesday uh, with a improvised interactive comedy show. Uh, sometimes we do long form improv. We're going to be doing that on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. Uh, so stop by tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to be doing some uh, a new format uh, with special guests. Um, actually, I don't know if we're revealing it yet, um, but we do have a special guest uh, on our show tomorrow. So I'm going to just let that be hype. They might have been in the chat, but I'm just going to I'm just going to leave some mystery there. Uh, wrong form improv. That is not what I said, but I do love the idea of wrong form <laughs> improv. Uh, so I'm going to say that that's what we're doing instead. Do come by. Uh, Rocky talked about it last night. Okay, so I guess it's been spoiled, but I'm just not going to talk about it just in case there's anybody in the chat who still is enticed by a secret surprise guest. So uh, do stop by tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for another uh, new stream. Other than that, uh, Gorbis, do you have any social media accounts that people can follow you on? Yeah, I would say, um, so I have a YouTube that I'm trying to grow right now. I think that's outside of Twitch, is, that's my main endeavor. Um, I have Twitter as well. You can find me at Cool Guy Gorbis. Um, but uh, YouTube, Cool Guy Gorbis, that's really what I'm trying to focus on. And that's um, so far exclusively Call of Duty, but I'm going to do other things as well. So if you like shooters, check that out too. So, um, And I'm definitely going to be turning on some notifications to make sure I'm tuning in tomorrow to Everything Now show. Because so, that sounds uh, like a good time. So do that as well. Hell yeah, it's going to be really fun. Go throw uh, Cool Guy Gorbis, uh, subscribe on YouTube as well. Come on, what do you got to lose? It's a subscription. You don't even, you can just It's free. Do it. You don't it's have to do anything. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. Go do that right now. Um, you can follow <laughs> me on Twitter. I do Twitter at Jake Allen Bogan. That's pretty much the only social media uh, that I use. I write jokes on there sometimes. It's a good time. Also, follow the Everything Now social medias. Uh, there's links to that down below. And finally, join our Discord. The Discord's so much fun. Gorbis, you're in our Discord sometimes, right? It's pretty fun. I am. It is lots of fun. Lots of it's different channels. It's a lot of fun. We have all kinds of fun channels. We post pictures of our food and our pets and our political beliefs. And we also post updates about the show. So if you want to know when the show is happening or what the show is, you can join the Discord and then you'll know about that stuff. Uh, but that's pretty much all I've got. Is there any one last thing that you'd like to say? Any message? Anything that you want to leave the viewers at home with, Gorbis, before we sign off? Uh, stick with the steady vibes and, uh, you know, Let's go. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know State vibes and go. <laughs> State vibes and go to the polls. Register to vote. Pokemon go to the polls. Pokemon go to the polls. Uh, <laughs> there's a vote.org link in in the link, in the chat. Uh, register to vote. And uh, that's it. Thanks, folks. That's the show. Goodbye. Later.